That's the first time I didn't spill. Getting better at this. Good luck to everybody else, but cheers. Good. How are you? Cheers, guys. Cheers. Jesus. And that's good. Well. Wow. All right. So don't be shy, guys. What are you guys pouring? Well, since we had uh, Brent on tonight, I decided to drink one that he brought out for me. This is the last can I have from you. What? Limited edition Oktoberfest lager from Goliath Brewing and a uh, toppling Goliath Brewing. And these guys are in Wisconsin? No. I think Decora, Iowa. I think. Iowa. Yeah. yeah. So you found this like at a bottle shop? I found it at a liquor store. Mm, interesting. <laughs> that's where that's where they sell beer out here. Dumpster hey, behind um, it. Or... <laughs> I'm like Salt Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to the liquor store and get a beer. Yeah, so this is just like a <laughs> classic German lager. Uh, it's nice, kind of a dark orange, but yeah, it's one of the better ones that Brandon's given me. Nice. nice. Is the season for Oktoberfest, right? Indeed. So I grabbed a uh, um, another, also a lager. This is by Common Roots here, and um, they're right out of uh, South Glens Falls, so a few miles from where I live. But uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a nice one. So this is just their just straight up lager. Um, but Common Roots is a it's a great brewery here in town. They've been brewing for probably about a decade now and they've just kind of grown really nicely and they've got a great venue and it's just a really cool place to hang out. Lots of good food. Nice. Yeah. What was that place we nice. went to, Jimmy? Yeah, that was, um, uh, it wasn't that place, was it? No, no. I think you'd like the common uh, roots better. Yeah. It was Lake George, yeah. just Lake George distillery or something like that. Adirondack okay. brewery, Adirondack brewery. That's what. All right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. I wasn't sure if it was on. Food's good, but <clears throat> yeah, we'll have to go out there sometime. Common roots on me. Yeah, yeah. No, you'd like it, Brent. I'm curious to see what the hell you're drinking because you're like vegetarian. You don't drink coffee. You don't. Are you Mormon actually? Because you don't drink beer either. Promise, I'm not Mormon. <laughs> Did you convert, man? In the last no. few months, is that what happened? <laughs> no, I'm less Mormon than ever. Uh, this is a non-alcoholic. Uh, dark brew uh let's say chocolate milk i'm reading it backwards on my screen right now uh from, <laughs> you can look at it from uh, untitled art which is um local brewery in a suburb of madison and it's they're a fantastic brewery i think you would probably like them and they're by far the best non-alcoholic beer um brewers they take their like normal beers and make them non-alcoholic so they have like hazy ipas and sours and shit like that so they have like a non-alcoholic version of every beer that they make? Not every beer, but a lot of them. Did you ever, back when you did drink beer, did you ever compare them? Um, No, because I never drank non-alcoholic beers back then, but I've had friends do it and they, I mean, alcohol does impart flavor. So um, yeah, and I feel like the body too, it's kind of yeah, thin without it. After our last trip, you had a, a sip of mine and you said it just was, it felt thin. It yeah. was a beer flavored LaCroix. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds delicious. That's a good description. It's still a beverage. I don't know if you can read it now, but this is my, my, uh, the onion mug and it just says, I enjoy drinking beer and it's still true. That's nice. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Brent was a off the rails alcoholic. He's been sober for a year now, over a year. <laughs> His life was in shambles, but yeah. So I met Eric in 2019, and then my life just you know living on the streets immediately. Just, yeah, um, it was bad. <laughs> so I had to shape up. We're we're embracing the same trend with Eric, <laughs> <laughs> leading everyone down the path of darkness. Yes, that's right. BLZ Bob. What are you drinking, Paul? Well, um. As you know, I was running a little bit late, so I just reached oh, in the fridge. 
And anything that the show is always anything that had two digits on it was coming with me. And uh, there you go. <laughs> so this one here is a um, it's a Fiden's uh, Dream State uh, collaboration. I think we've all had a had a taste of this one. Um, it's the King's Justice. It's a uh, triple IPA. Um, it is. Um, its profile is a Simcoe, uh, Citra, Nelson, Galaxy, and um, one other one that I just really can't make out because I don't have my glasses on, which is weird, but um, super smooth, really tasty. Um, man, I, this, um, it just, I had, I had one of these a few weeks ago, and man, it just cooled off even a little bit more, and it's really super smooth and uh, absolutely fantastic. So, I'm enjoying this one. That's a great. Yeah, that one. one is amazing. Uh, nice. Yeah, that was good. I had one of those a week ago. I still have one can of that one left that I'm saving for my birthday, but it it froze entirely in the back of my fridge, so I had to like defrost it. But I think it'll be fine. But I'm scared. To put a stick in it, you can have it like a popsicle. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure that'd be good. A popsicle. <laughs> I've had a few like that where I was camping or whatever, and it got into yeah. If you're gone for a while, it gets cold in there, you know. Yeah, you got to turn yeah. down the temperature. You also like don't want it too full because then like the cold air just gets trapped in the back of the fridge, and it'll just freeze like that whole back row. That's what happened to me. I had a sour explode. There was like frozen sour Dude, all over the back. That sucks. Yeah, it's fun to clean it, up. But... It's like a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a bathroom. Yeah, I know what you. <laughs> hey, still sensitive. <laughs> it's a touchy subject. Mikey. Yeah. All right. So I'm drinking. Um, so like Paul, I'm, I'm drinking a big boy. Other half JFK to LAX. That was kind of a cool name. So I grabbed that <laughs> one. So this is a triple IPA. Um, I think. They don't really it's say a collab it, with I think Monkish. That's why it's called Monkish. Yeah, LAX, okay. Because they're in LA. LA, yeah. So that makes sense. But um, uh, really, really, really happy. So the profile Citra, Simcoe, Montuca. I think I'm saying that right. Citra Cryo. Matueka. There you go. Citra Incognito. Cool name. Simcoe Cryo. Matueka Hop Keef. I don't know. There's a lot of shit on there. I don't know what it is. But uh, you definitely taste the hops in this one. Um, the citrus probably coming through more than anything. Um, but yeah, I'm letting it open up a little bit. It was a little bit, a bit like a punch in the mouth that first sip, but <laughs> yeah, I remember it, that one being slightly thing. boozy. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it was. When were those? Uh, cans? I was, to... Yeah. I was just about to say nine, nine thirteen. So uh, not that long ago. Yeah. Uh, I thought those were older. I thought they were like August. I mean, it's, it's a little bit smudge. I think it's. Oh, August you're right. 13th. It is an eight. Not, yeah, you're right. It's an eight, not a nine. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I drank all those like right anyway. at the one month mark. So. I did that was too. A while ago. I did too. I uh, I didn't enjoy them as much as last year's uh, last year's release, but uh, they were still good. Yeah, they were. Okay. So in two, all right. And... Yeah. What I was, I was gonna ask when breweries do a collab, what does that mean exactly? Do they make a recipe together and then each brew it, or so a lot of times that happens and they'll each release their own version of the same recipe, or they'll do slight variations on the same recipe. Or what a lot of times what they do is say like one brewery does a super good beer, they'll give that recipe to another brewery and they'll try to brew it. So they'll brew like their own version of it. So those are always interesting because like it's obviously never the same because like water, just like the kind of water they have access to wherever they are in the country can make a huge difference. Like if the water is harder or softer, uh, like New York has really soft water. That's why a lot of their beer is like mm. has a really soft mouthfeel. It's part of it. Mm. Um, depends like what kind of hops they got, where they got them from, even if it's the same strain. So yeah, it's usually one of those two things like that JFK to LAX one. That's a shared recipe. So um, yeah, they they brew it together. Sometimes they'll brew it together in person too, or or sometimes they'll just trade it like virtually, and then each each one will brew it themselves. Mm. Yeah, they're always cool because uh, when they have a collaboration, like since they're putting another brewery's name on the can, you know they usually give it some tender love and care. 
make sure it turns out good because they don't want to mess up anybody's reputation. That raw dog in nature was a collab, I believe. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was a good one. That that one actually did taste really good. Good. Yeah, you did a lot better this time than, than the last time. All the ones you gave me last time went into like chili and marinating meat and stuff. I figured out I figured <laughs> out my problem. So the, the first time I was like, I want to get you some classic like Wisconsin beers. Nothing flashy. Uh, just like the staples that everyone drinks here. And then, then you hated all of them. I'm like, oh shit, I need to get like, <laughs> like the frou-frou fanciest pinkies up kind of, kind of beer. And that hey, went better. At least he cooked with the beer you sent him. He just threw my sh the shit I sent him right down the drain. So. Oh no. <laughs> What's up, Lawson's? Awesome. Right, well, thanks for coming on. Let's just, uh, let's get straight into this, man. Yeah. Who are you voting for in the next presidential election? <laughs> <laughs> right in Peter, Peter Lick. Oh, that's a good candidate, actually. <laughs> never thought of yeah. that. That's not a bad call. Yeah. He wasn't born in the US though, was he? Oh, he's Australian, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Gotta be yeah, born but he in the United can, States. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. We actually we actually had him on the last episode, so it's <laughs> would have been yeah. nice to have you in there as well, Brent. But uh yeah, he he made an appearance. It's a total <laughs> dick. <laughs> yeah, he's lost his accent. He's hung out in the U.S. so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he was very Americanized. It was yeah. really weird. Kind of Scottish, too. Yeah, a little Irish. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, the hat and the gun show gave it away. <laughs> hey, the guy was confused, though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Didn't know where he was. So what have you been up to, Brent? Uh, you been anywhere lately? Yeah, uh, a week or two ago, I went up to Lake Superior, which is kind of, I think it's a hidden gem of the upper Midwest. Um, is that like Michigan? Uh, we went to the, a part of Wisconsin. There's a, a place called the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. Um, Ian Plant's got some stuff from there, like those sea caves. Um, they have one backpacking site on the mainland, and I uh, got it. And... Uh, Whoa. We did it and got fucking just rained on. So it was like cold and wet and kind of <laughs> photos, were, <laughs> photos were okay. Um, the trees, you know, along the shore are, they stay green for a long time and they're really beat up. So it's like, it wasn't the best photography trip, but I was like, um, it's some of the best, most interesting nature we have. So, And how big is that island? You said that backpacking trail was like 20 miles or something? Um, well, there's Isle Royal is a national park in Lake Superior. It's 40 miles long. I'm actually going to go there next year again, but, um, that's yeah. way <clears> off. <throat> that's t closer to Canada. Um, that's the one, is that the one you were talking about when we were backpacking earlier this year? I think so. Um, when I went, we did a, we had a hellish seven hour boat trip. Uh, oh yeah. You there. said, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You were talking about like another time. Yeah. Yeah. The water was choppy and uh people were vomiting and a dude literally got uh pneumonia they stripped his clothes wrapped him in blankets and I, 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 yeah you got like hypothermia I, right that's what i meant sorry uh i, I didn't see Brent's, him Brent's a little nervous he's trying to impress you guys i didn't see him move <laughs> the whole time and when we got there like there was an ambulance and i'm like i don't even know what happened to him but they just gave um, him a beer and he was fine stood up and walked away yeah <laughs> gave him a beer and a body bag that's, get out how they, <laughs> that's, that's how they do it in michigan yeah that's how you do it up there it's like a uh, a wolf population on, on on that island right yeah it's it's um it's unique in that if they study the interaction between moose and wolf populations there it's supposed to be one of the most like pure predator prey environments so they can study it with less uh confounding variables which is kind of cool that's cool yeah. And the uh, moose and wolves are native? Um, they were, and I think populations have uh, dwindled. Been, dwindled, and I think they actually reintroduced a bunch of wolves there. So, yeah. yeah. I saw a moose, but I've never seen a wolf. Don't really want to see a wolf. They're kind of scary. Yeah. Supposedly there's like, uh, I had a park ranger friend say, Cause I was in the Tetons and, uh, there are wolves and like, 
I actually uh, like slept in one of those empty barns one night. I got like unofficial permission, whatever. Uh, and there's just like a it was just like a big opening, and there was just a chain link fence like blocking the opening. And uh, before I went to sleep, like she told me, like, hey, there is like a wolf den uh, not too far from here, so you might hear some howling at night. I was like, okay, cool, sounds good. I got woken up by howling and like scratching on the chain link fence and it's like bouncing. Like, <laughs> like they were trying to get in. I was like, god. oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> was that, out? that was in the Tetons. But supposedly, so like what she said is, I, I told her the next day, she's like, well, there's never been like a documented attack of wolves on humans. But then you hear oh, wow. all these stories, yeah, you know, people getting hunted and stuff. Because people die, actuals. nobody's there's nobody there to document it. They died. They're dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they ate all. The roadkill. <laughs> yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to mess with them. Even if they're not going to kill you, you know, getting in a fight with a bunch of big dogs doesn't sound fun. Nah. Yeah, yeah it's a big up. puppy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, even a dog can can mess you up, ruin your day. Absolutely. Right. Look out, Mike. This one right behind you. I know. I was just gonna say you're making stash back there nervous. Looks pretty vicious. Yeah. He's killing. Remember this, Brent? Yeah. That's true. Good times. This is the this is the first time Brent and I ever met in person. Yeah. Just Here's in a random beard, that beard and hair uh, we were talking about. Nice. Yeah, it's it was pretty world. long back then. He's not yeah. he's not talking about himself, he's talking about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Ball. uh yeah you were running a one-time only workshop and it was full and i asked if i could join and you said yeah and uh <laughs> it was a it was a really good idea very yeah, cool. so i took i took this group in uh and i didn't know what kind of condition they would be in so we went with like a tour company that had horses because I, I didn't know if they'd be able to do the hike it was 14 miles to this spot where we had like a base camp and uh yeah i wish we had mr wyoming in this photo because he's definitely a highlight yeah. of the trip yeah mr wyoming was one of the i mean these are like real ass cowboys that are guiding the horses and mr wyoming i, I don't know his name but that's what we call him he had a <laughs> like a duster he had a six shooter he had a cowboy, <laughs> cowboy hat. he had like a gray like handlebar mustache and like Legit. He was legit. And uh, he has he some choice quotes, which uh, Eric can do better than me. Yeah, so like we're all riding these horses in and he's in the front and like every now and then they would want to like stop and try to graze or like just just mess around, you know, like they they didn't have the greatest work ethic, I guess. And whenever <laughs> he'd notice and he'd turn around and he'd see us like kind of far back, he'd be like, don't let it eat. Kick the crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> just kept saying that. Kick the crap out of him. Jeez. So cool. Yeah, hilarious. those horses. Those horses only hike uh, twenty-eight miles a day with like a hundred pounds. Their work ethic's pretty bad. <laughs> and this dude. Uh, I think his name was Kevin, actually. But uh, yeah, we called him Mister Wyoming, and he looked like Yosemite Sam, the cartoon character, <laughs> like handlebar mustache. Like five foot five, maybe like super short dude, duster all the way down to the ground. Six That's shooter. That's awesome. That is so yeah. cool. You should have a picture of that guy, man. I know. Wow. He probably would have kicked the crap out of me, though. <laughs> <laughs> we take photos. <clears throat> that was a great time, though. Good crew. Um, most of us um, made it out alive. Had some sick dapp dappled light. Yeah, that was a photos. good trip. Yeah. Made some good friends too. Ryan Pulaski on the left, especially. He and I have done some stuff together since then. <clears throat> and then uh, John, I think that was his name. He like broke his leg the next year. That was gnarly. He like yeah. fell off a cliff. Like, in Where at? Uh, somewhere like Where's around you? Rocky no Mountain National Park, I think. It was in the winter. Yeah. Really? How to get life flatted and stuff. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, so I was I was looking for like a bunch of embarrassing photos, but all the trips we've done have been super awesome. So they're all just like <laughs> epic places and I was thinking like I probably have more embarrassing photos of you than you have. 
Well, that's why I'm the host of the show. We're gonna I need be those. Doing this presentation. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, send those our way, dude. Yeah, those may come in handy later, so let's keep them <laughs> down low. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I got ahead of all that, and I just started hosting my own show, so I can control all the content that comes out about me. I can I can cut stuff out of this. I can censor you guys. Nothing's gonna slip through. Bad deal. I'm, we're gonna have to rethink that, you guys, especially with uh, uh, his birthday coming up. We're gonna have to like get something. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, we got to do a birthday edition of the Brews and Views for Eric. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one the, only, the only problem is, is he's the one who does like 90% of setting it up. So it would be like, exactly. yeah, we're going to do that. And then nobody would set it up. <laughs> no, it wouldn't exist without me. That's right. Freaking savage. Yeah. Stud. So what's going on here? This is this a hot tub? <laughs> the liner it, broke. Is this a seasonal hot tub? It's an ancient hot tub. <laughs> yeah, it was not in season when we were there. Uh, I don't know. We just went hiking in a remote canyon that had a whole bunch of ruins and pottery shards and, uh, you know, writing on the wall. What do they call them? Hieroglyphs? Petroglyphs? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, these would be pictographs. pictographs. Petroglyphs are carved in, and pictographs are like painted. Got it. You can tell I'm from Wisconsin. I don't know uh, what hieroglyphs mean, like hieroglyphics. I don't know what the difference is, but very cool. Yeah, this was a cool trip. This was uh, April, I think, 2021. It was May. I freaked out it's... and quit quit my job, and I was like, I need to travel as much as i can while i'm unemployed so this is my last trip before i got a new job okay <laughs> yeah we did a couple trips while you were yeah on your hiatus exactly um we had to so there's like no water here and we did a backpacking trip so we had to carry in we carried in a bunch of water because you just don't know if any springs are going to be reliable or anything so yeah that first day we were carrying like gallons of water and then we we made it we we like we found water to filter, but it was like, you know, those, uh, those images I have of like oily, like, uh, the biofilm, like on the water, that's like what we were filtering, like <laughs> the muckiest, like oh, God. It's milkshake water, dude. You really got to <laughs> trust that filter. Taste. It's like right we were now. drinking some Saison's or something. I bet it did. <laughs> I saved some of it. It's uh, it's right here. I'm drinking. Oh, right <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's finely aged. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm reading that Craig Child's book right now, The Secret Knowledge of Water, and I thought about trips like this where I'm like, that dude could probably find water anywhere, but we're you know filtering mud. I know. He he like backpacked through ranges, uh, like documenting where water was and stuff, and in that book. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Is that the first book you've read by him? Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool though. I mean like Oh yeah, I love his stuff. And that's that's one of my favorite ones. What's Eric? his name? Craig Childs. He's he wrote the forward for uh, Eric's forthcoming book. Pre order right now. Actually, but Yeah, did you know I made a game. book, Paul? I you make books? Yeah, I'm a <laughs> photographer. Oh yeah, no. they've got I don't just drink them. beer, believe it or not. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I already, I think I got my uh, limited edition and you were going to put some, uh, some, uh, a personal message in there to me. So hopefully uh, that's coming through. It's going to be a poem. It's going to be a haiku. <laughs> haiku about uh, his chest hair. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yes. I thought chest hair was off limits for this episode. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> We're not even like 10 minutes in. Seriously. Oh. Yeah, I'm still a little bit uh, sticky. I was waiting for Jamie to bring up the, the melt. What? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the melt. So <clears throat> what are these drinking? <laughs> Some salmon. Salmon Bottoms jokes. Up. Oh, fuck. You ever, you ever go salmon fishing, Brent? <laughs> you ever uh, watch the bears catch the salmon? I saw photos of it uh, on the show. Whoa. Yeah. Best yeah, educated episode you. ever. Yeah. No, the shows, I watch it for the educational value. <laughs> this looks very intimate yeah it does yeah it was a great trip you know just four guys way out in the back country where no one can find them 
Yeah. Alberto is like, for this one, I feel like we should hold hands, but look really serious. <laughs> that's a great I thought idea. it was my idea. I was like, that's hey, pretty fucking funny. Oh, was it you? Okay. I think it was me, yeah. And I'm staring right into the sun. Half my face is sunburned, so I look like a clown. Uh, <laughs> I'm like I'm like in the perfect spot of lighting, of course, because I'm a great you photographer. Are. I chose that. I'm like in the chiaro scuro, like <laughs> lightly soft light, you know, a little shadow on my face. These guys are like blown <laughs> out. Like it, it reflects in their photography, you know, just like blown <laughs> out, even light. I, I got this like interesting shadow play. Always yeah, I mean, Eric, you needed the most help, so is they they let you take the good light. So, Dude, always a professional, man. Just you said, hey, you guys stand to my right, a little further. I'm always on. Yeah, it's... who's that on the who's that on the left? Martin Gonzalez. Okay, yeah, that's I thought I thought that's who because I've never met him in real life. I've just seen like his profile picture. I was like, I bet that, yeah. I bet you that was who that was. I I've talked to him in Alberto a lot, but had never met them i guess in the field until then so we're like i don't know why don't we go 20 miles into the back country for the first time we ever meet what could go wrong and uh yeah. it was a great time that's awesome <laughs> you guys have a good time an amazing time that's um, cool. yeah and uh on all these trips that brent and i have done together we've shared a tent so some good pillow talk at night that's nice <laughs> who's, who, who's big spoon well i'm, I'm taller but he's kind of stinky, so I'm not. I don't really spin yeah. him. <laughs> you told me I, I have like a face once uh, when we were sleeping head to toe. <laughs> I have like a. Uh, I have a superpower. I never get like bo at all. I've never used deodorant like ever. I don't use any at all, and I never stink. Like nobody's ever told me I stink or anything. Maybe everybody's just like really scared of me or really nice to me, but like I never smell anything either. <laughs> But uh, so I'm like the dream companion and I don't snore. But then Brent over here. I don't snore. Yeah, you don't snore. That's that's one of the worst things. I was camping with my buddy a couple of weeks ago and I was just anticipating it anyways. I was like, all right, separate tents, not sharing. I don't do that with everybody, Brent. So don't get jealous. And then uh, <laughs> he was like 40 feet away from me and I would wake up like he's the noisiest sleeper ever. Like he was waking me up like every 10 minutes. I swear to God, the whole night. I thought I was going to have like a nice restful sleep, you know, getting out of the house, not having babies wake up. Nah, this dude <laughs> totally ruined it for me. So that's rough. <laughs> that is rough. But yeah, Brent, after a couple of days, he gets ripe. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, anybody watching this, if you're going to hang out with Brent, make him bring his own tent. Do, do your due diligence. <laughs> due diligence. Uh, no joking, I, I'm blessed with a horrible sense of smell. So whether you smell or not, I don't know. It's great. <laughs> it's a, it's and, a blessing and a curse. It's usually a blessing. I feel like there's more bad smells than good. Oh, for sure, dude. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, especially when you're camping with a bunch of dudes, like there's farts flying yeah. everywhere. <laughs> those those uh, dehydrated <laughs> meals after a couple of days. Oh, oh, dude, catch up to you. Work you. Especially like uh, Alberto, you know, he's like not taking a shit for, like the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a presto <laughs> in the chamber. <laughs> he brought he brought like four uh, like what beef stroganoffs or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one. He ate, like the same meal. Just every all day. beef stroganoff and then one pad thai. He's just oh, packing a heater. <laughs> <laughs> we That's all so made it out you, alive. Uh, I don't know if uh, Jimmy and Mike go backpacking very often, but Paul, do you have a favorite dehydrated meal? Yeah, I do. Um, I really love. Um, God, what did I have? I just do you, I just, do you usually get the Mountain House brand or Backpackers Pantry or something else? Um, I like. I usually get. Um, I kind of mix it up a little bit based on whatever trip I'm going on. But have you had Peak before? Peak refuel. Yeah. Those are expensive. No, I haven't tried them, but that was like yeah, 13 really, bucks a pop. Yeah, I really, um, I like those a lot. Um, I like, th they've got like a good uh, macaroni type one. Um, they've got a good stroganoff. I always like like the pad thai and stuff like that too. Cause I'll bring like a little tube of uh, like sriracha or whatever. This is, is like a little, 
you know, just a little extra kick treat that you can have. And you're like, okay, it's pretty badass that I've got Sriracha 20 miles deep. So <laughs> really speed up the diarrhea. Yeah. I'm consistent, man. I'm like next morning. I'm, I'm the yeah. dude. That's like I'm taking care of business. First thing I'm, I'm drinking a coffee and then uh, getting it done. Before sunrise, uh, so the issue like with these... shooting in the morning. What's that? Like before sunrise, if you're going to shoot in the morning, you'll oh, handle yeah. business. Really? Yeah, got... Wow. Yeah. So you get up like yeah. early. Yeah. I like so to... these things give you the shits, right? Like these, like. No, not the ones I have. Yeah. <laughs> if you no, get no, them, that, I haven't had. I've I've had them before, but I've not had a lot of them. But like, no, I no, mean, no. The, like, the, the Mountain joke. House brand is budget. Avoid those at all costs. Like, okay. they yeah. suck. Yeah. They taste gross. They give you gas. Yeah. horrible backpackers pantry those are the only ones that i get um they have like a lot of vegetarian options like they, they actually have like you can understand the ingredients on the back it's not like freaking maltodextrin okay. and hydrochloric it's That's like it right there. it's like broccoli okay. chicken salt yep. you know like th- things you can read food um right <laughs> but brent brent what is the best meal of all time uh pad thai circa 2019 Oh, uh, that's true because they did kind of change up the recipe for a little, but I, I think did. they've gone back to the original <laughs> recipe. God, I hope so. God, I hope so. Dude, the I latest ones I got on there. That's great. Yeah, Brent's been like, had, uh, um... tr- trying to get them on eBay. <laughs> yeah, checking yeah, the. You guys have had MREs, like actual, like like military MREs. No, I not, have. Not. So I have. You have. Yeah, yeah my, and so yeah. you know what happens to those? Like you, you eat like a day of those and you are not going to shit for like a week. Oh, dude. Like, they, I don't know what they put in those things, but is it that is done like, intentionally. I think so. Like, I mean, that's not, that's like the ongoing joke theory, whatever you want to call it. But like, yeah, keep, keep the soldiers fighting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> My son's pulled a couple of those off the fire engine and then like just thrown them in the garage. And I mean, yeah. they're, they're they're completely black. You don't know what they're like a mystery bag. Yeah. You know what they are? There's no dates on it. Nothing. You just crack that baby open and add some water and cross your fingers. The actual the 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 real military MREs have. It'll tell you what's in them. They're in that like super thick plastic bag, and they have like a twenty year shelf life. I've still got like a dozen Dude. of them. Um, but yeah, they're. Uh, they're, they're no joke when it comes to that. So I don't know. They probably, and each one of them too. The other thing too, is like each meal is like 3000 calories. It's like an insane amount of like oh food in like That's a wild. tiny little container. It'd be like one MRE per day would be more than fine. It's not really 3000. It's a lot though. Uh, but like, yeah, I mean, that'd be great backpacking food. I don't really backpack a lot, but. You know what? I, I smell a, a future like episode in the off season preparing for backpacking season where we can uh, do a little bit of a review on some, some, uh, some meals i believe it was uh i think it was, uh, like, it was backpackers pantry but on april fool's day they published like a dehydrated beer meal it was like an ipa and you just add water to it and <laughs> it was funny for a second i thought it was real i was like oh man that can't be good but could you yeah, imagine good, though if you could just nail that oh yeah I mean, oh, I, I kind of like backpacking because it's like I take like a forced break. From, I give my liver a break, you know, I give it a chance to recoup while I'm out there. That's how I see it. And then when you get back, <laughs> you the beer liver just come up amazing. for air. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the it's beer just tastes so clean. good when you come back, you know, that first one when it Clean out the filter with some mountain water. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, there, I don't know, but there's something about like being, you know, pretty deep and having one in the lake or the stream oh i'm sure it's great Wait, what are you talking what are you talking about paul uh, a couple things <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's totally not worth the wait uh, <laughs> but it's definitely like one of those deals where it's like i'm pretty stoked to have this beer in my hand right now i'm hurting once, but i'm stoked once when eric and i went uh backpacking in a canyon in uh november we we brought some beers and we were next to like a little stream which was very cold and you just like pile up a bunch of rocks and put the beers underneath and like they were super refreshing they, everything tastes better in the back country yes but the next year i went back to that same canyon with paul and michael bellino and i carried in an actual cooler with like 12 <laughs> cans 
So Dude. that was amazing. <laughs> that was it. This guy was a total savage. He literally carried it all the way in. So, years every so when Brent and I went there, there was no rope set up. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was like, it's cool, man. Uh, you can go down with that one. And uh, I think, did I carry your backpack down too for you, Brent? We lowered was that it that with, nice? a, with a rope and you, you like caught it. And then I would hike down, scramble down to you. And then you would go down again and I would lower it again and... It, it was probably the scariest thing I've done in my life, which I'm, I'm very blessed, a uh, very blessed life, but uh, it was fucking steep. <laughs> there were a couple, a couple of spots that uh, had sketchy grips. Yeah. It's not know, too bad. I know that, <laughs> yeah. We've, I've uh, brought extra rope in there before at different times, just because you can never really count on it being there. Um, that's, that's sketch though. If there's no rope there, that's, I wouldn't mind coming out with no rope, but it's, down, no, a lot of times, like if some like slow person's coming down or going up on the rope, I'll just go around them without the rope. That's it's not bad at all going up, but I'm going down, down, going down is scary, but it's not hard. Agreed. Agreed. If you have the right shoes on, because if you do fall, you'll fucking die. You will die. You're, like, there's no you or, or you'll just get so fucked up and you're out in the middle of nowhere. You have no cell reception. Like, good luck. Yeah, you'll hope if you you would hope you were died dead, but um, yeah, you're <laughs> right though. I mean, if if you have the right shoes and whatever, and 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 if you're going in there backpacking, I mean, you're carrying a pretty big load. Yeah, that can throw you around. Yeah. Good times. Yep. Good times. Um. Yeah. So usually when I when Brent and I meet up to go shoot, we do backpacking trips because we both enjoy it and we like to get out where no one can find us and. We can enjoy each other's company, you know, without any interruption or surveillance, you know, nobody bothering us. Ah, sounds really intimate. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we have a ritual because I also think pad thai. I think I turned you on to the pad thai meal, right? Was it me? Yeah. You did. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> change backpacker's life. pantry, the pad thai meal. We have a ritual. We usually only bring one on each trip and you can't eat it until you have like you know, like just those days where you have like an amazing sunset or like, it's just like a killer day of shooting. Like th those days where you're just like, oh yeah, I nailed it today. Like, yeah, you just feel great. Those are the days that you can eat a pad thai. So you save it for that. Usually, you know, there's one day that stands out from the trip photographically. That's the day you eat the pad thai. That's I'd never be eating the pad thai. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's a really good call. I mean, and so on, on the last backpacking trip that Brent and I did with these guys, Brent brought two pad ties. I was like, Ooh. are you kidding me, dude? Oh, You're flexing shit. so hard right now. Dude, he totally Man was. Manifesting good days. <laughs> that is so classic. It was locked and loaded. Uh, it turns out, though, not there were no pad tie day days. Like, we all ate it on the last day, and we were kind of like, well, it's this or starve. It's kind of a well, we, we had we had clear skies every day yeah. which with mountains is you know it's not it's not a you, you can make it work for like intimate scenes and stuff but for sure when you're shooting mountains like you just need those clouds behind them um but the best like night photographically ended up being like the first night like right when we hiked in and got to that lake and we're shooting that like uh, grass in the water and stuff and then the morning after was really nice too so little did we know that that would have been the pad thai night, but we were we had big hopes and expectations. Yep. <laughs> That's so cool. I love it, man. What'd you crack open, Paul? Yeah, sorry guys. I wanna wanna I wanna I sent out the scout. I'm going ahead. I can't believe you got through that uh triple IPA. Did you just have it on an IV or something? Dude, I drank that thing like someone was gonna snatch it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I need to decompress a little bit. Um, what I've got here is a, uh, a little great notion fix. Um, this one, uh, comes out every year around this time. And, um, I really like it. It's a DDH express comes in at 7%. So super drinkable, you know, um, you know, you start with that 10% then cool it down a little bit with the, uh, with the seven. 
And um, I that's can't... not usually how you do it at all. Usually you like go from light to head <laughs> go the to... other way. <laughs> not me, dude. I, I got to hit it hard. I got to get punched in the mouth out of the gate <laughs> and then cool it off a little bit. <clears throat> so I can't. Um, I don't see a hot profile on this, but uh, I will tell you it was canned um, 926. So a few weeks ago, I got a couple of four packs of it. Um, I had it there on tap. Um, you know, things change from year to year, um, you know, on just annual type releases and it was solid and, uh, grabbed another one. So I'm enjoying it. Cool. Cheers. Yeah, I think I had this, some last fall. This was, uh, at, at the, at the brewery in town, right after our backpacking trip, first meal, first real meal after. So good. Five days, five nights, six days. Yeah. Five nights. Those are the I best. Like yeah the first the first meal back uh divine is that the normal spot eric yeah it depends what trailer head you're at because some of the trailheads are like 40 miles apart so uh this particular trailhead has like an actual town like right next to it um the other way you're on dirt roads for like two hours there's nothing out there by the trailhead but we actually <laughs> we took a detour to come through the town on the way out to get some proper food oh that's cool Always the yeah, best beers and meal. burgers. Always the best meal after putting in that type of work. Look at Alberto with the duck lips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's flexing yep. hard, dude. Look at that. Oh, y'all look a bit rough. Hey, <laughs> some brews after the views. We were roasting. How how long were you in? Five days, you said? Six days? Five nights, six days. Sweet. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we, we hucked it though. We hiked. We like changed camp almost every day. We hung out at one spot for two nights, three nights. Nice. Three. Yeah. So then we like hiked kind of far for our last night to be in a different spot for sunset and then hiked out in the morning. But so, so I'm not being judgmental here, but those look like some pretty fucking multi IPAs. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't have a multi. That's that's an iced coffee, and then in my hand, I think that's water. So, okay. Uh, and the other ones are probably like that's not water. There, what are you talking about? Water? There's foam on the top of that. It's not it, water. Okay, I was drinking a pilsner. <laughs> yeah, usually when you go so, to some of those breweries, it's like that's a good call. Like just stay safe with a pilsner. Pronghorn pilsner, <laughs> <laughs> as advertised. <laughs> Brent, Brent just threw in a photo in the chat if you want to check it out. Just got my head. Wait, what? How do, how do I do that? Oh, shit. That's sick, dude. What'd you do? <laughs> Eric just fucking fell over laughing. And uh, <laughs> and uh, the the best part was he was holding an Oreo and a, a Pad Thai and he, he didn't spill them. What? After the moment. What a sad <laughs> I've got all, I've got all yeah. kinds of oh, there we go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all right, all right, Brent. Let's stay on track here, okay? Oh, <laughs> sure. Now you want to stay on track. All right, fuck you, Brent. Oh, no. <laughs> How do you have it? I can't see it. Oh, there we go. I tried shaving. <laughs> it didn't go well. You, just, you should have shaved your eyebrows, too. Yeah. Full alien. <laughs> You guys are animals. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to pay a few bucks to get this one. It was worth it. <laughs> I had to call in a few favors. Oh, good. <laughs> so uh, this is not Halloween, twenty twenty two. Brent is actually in a heavy metal band called uh, Lords of the Trident, and that's him in the middle trying to look like the fucking Undertaker. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, he wears a cloth over his head. You son and a lot. I I was trying to find like other photos, but you like usually have your face covered up and stuff, man. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not good looking, so I gotta cover. It's up. like he knew this day would come, so he's been preparing like all these years, like. Covering his face and photos and uh, <laughs> deleted his Facebook profile so what I you, couldn't what, dig up anything there. He's like a ghost online. <laughs> what, do you, what do you play? 
uh, bass guitar. Dude, I, I used to play. The, I used to play the bass. Fuck yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. yeah so uh, you guys all listened to the mindset uh, audio series I did, right? That I sent you. Oh I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I was yeah. like, "What are you talking?" Was... You know the music yeah. like at the beginning of each track. That's yeah. him. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my boy. Okay. That's Brent. Yeah. Shit. Did a little collab. Where can we find it, dude? <laughs> right, hey, talk to us about that. Oh, the music? It's not on any streaming service. Uh, Lords of the Trident, again, is the name. Lords uh, of the Trident. Yeah. We're kind Did of... you, say, you said it is or it isn't on, a st- on the streaming oh, service? Oh, it is. It is. It is. It's we're on Spotify. Oh, okay. Looking everywhere. Um, okay. But yeah, I've been in the band since 2010, so that's actually longer than I've even been taking photos. Um, that's so sick, dude. Yeah. Um, All right, put that down. Cool. At this point, we've uh, we've toured Japan and Europe, and we've made several records, and uh, it's a big part of my life. But it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. So, (laughs) dude, that's so badass. Thanks. That is so cool. What are you uh, What are you holding there, Brent? An invisible orange. Mm. (laughs) That's the joke. I don't know what I was doing, man. Photo shoots are awful. What would you um what would you categorize the music as? Uh it's probably closest to power metal is what they okay. call it. So it's like clean vocals. Um and it's all melodic, so it's not terribly yeah. like scary sounding or anything. Yes. Dude, right there yeah. slapping the bass. Yeah, check it out. It's got his this legs is... spread. <laughs> I went to uh I went to a concert last night. What'd you see? Uh Tool here in Portland. Oh damn, that's awesome! They're yeah. all my favorite bands. Me too. I've seen them like ten times. Every time they're in Portland or close to Portland, they're in Salt Lake the other night. Bennett, you son of a bitch! I'm um, not a fan. Man, the <laughs> show was amazing. Every song was like fifteen, twenty minutes long. It was just sick. Awesome. I just know that one song by them, Schism, that has a pretty sick bass lick in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's a great. That always song. stuck in my mind. That's that lick is the uh, stairway to heaven of of bass lines. Where if you go into like a guitar shop, like someone's gonna be playing that at any given moment. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that that's that moment we like, Brent, right there, where we're just getting showcased. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So why do you guys like gum so much, man? What's the obsession with Trident? Uh, sponsorship, you know. Hmm. No, I don't know. <laughs> The band was made before I joined, so they just, I think they were just college kids making up dumb shit, and then it's like, oh, damn it, it's stuck. Now we're here. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty sick. Cool. Heavy metal, that's... conquering bad breath, one song at a time. <laughs> so so when you tour the, like the U.S., are you guys just stay over there on the East Coast, or do you come out West, or what's your story? Well, the, this photo was taken in um, Sacramento, so in in april we did a two-week tour don't do this but it was wisconsin to la to vancouver back to wisconsin uh it was like nine hours almost every day driving (laughs) Um, look at all that gear around dance yeah that's intense um my job allows me to work remotely so i just worked from the van with like a a my (laughs) phone He's no vacation to go on like a two week tour. It's pretty sweet. Wow. Gotta, gotta save it for photos, you know? Uh, and yeah, so we, we tour our West every so often. We go, we go to out East. Sometimes we've been to Boston. We go to North Carolina. Um, we're going up into Canada in two weeks as well. What part? What part? Man, we tried to go to Montreal, but our show got canceled. So um, we're just going to toronto and london so both both in ontario cool Cool. wanted to go to montreal but no dice we may have to take we may have to take the show on the road boys (laughs) yeah so do you guys do you get they all these guys live like near you yeah we're all in madison thank goodness so we can get together regularly that's super sick dude and you're also an influencer he does this all the time fucking taking selfies of himself and it's all about him usually i'm like (laughs) you know, have a swimsuit on. I'm like showing my ass and, you know, nice. yeah, that's cool. He's always like, he's like, Eric, can you take a picture of me out here on this ledge at the background? 
no, I'm, gonna, no. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grab my uh, dick, I'm gonna grab my dick real quick <laughs> <laughs> we must follow different accounts You're <laughs> yeah. a little uh, uh what is that called uh what do you call that stuff mike what what are you talking about the only fan <laughs> right the what your only, only fans. fans your only fans account bro come on keep keep up yeah dude i, I have no idea what you're talking about jimmy jimmy's the one with the only fans account where he like yeah i was gonna say jimmy's the one who's got the whole, crop the, beers yeah. onto his chest and like films it dripping down yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you about my I mean, new uh, Mercedes that I got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it? Peter Lex got an OnlyFans account. I don't know. Is that what you were talking about, Paul? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Could be. I, I, I was referencing the Tiger. Oh, oh right, right, right. Yeah. El, El Tigre oh. Loco. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was like three bad. episodes ago. Catch up. Dude, I fucking left you hanging on that one. Bad. The, the hippocampus doesn't function so well after a few beers, so. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> embarrassing yeah, black it out. really is <laughs> yeah so uh you live in wisconsin but you love to come out to the southwest yeah i think this was on the first trip i ever went on um oh this so, wasn't when you came out and we were out here no so i was by myself um for this one so i i mean it's a it's a pretty well-known spot at this point so i just wanted to check it out and i think the first thing i did um, when I flew in was I drove here and then slept in my car and like, I don't know, I immediately fell in love with the Southwest. It's like my favorite, favorite place to go. So, um, I don't know, just really damn happy. <laughs> I've come I can back. tell. Got your hands on your hips, dude. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> Mike and Jimmy, you guys need to listen to Brent because I mean, he is speaking the truth. We need to get you guys out here. South Fuck yeah. no, no, there's nothing out here, guys. You can stay out there and Yeah, we're crashing at Eric's are. pad. He's gonna keep trees. the kids out so we have a bed. Yeah, we got Spring. plenty of room here, man. Spring in the yeah. desert and then we'll come out to uh uh east coast in the fall. Figure it out. Yeah, I got uh I got an extra bassinet for Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> it better be like six six, I dude. Play. That guy's a <laughs> giant. You blow out the, the rails on one end of it. <laughs> Whoa. These aren't embarrassing oh, at all, Eric. You're like a ghost, dude. There's not a whole lot to work with. You want me to go back to the to the bald alien no, one? We can oh, we can no. hang out on that one for a while. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> uh, hey, what, what'd you title this one? Crotch shot? Uh, I titled this "Ice to See You," which is a Simpsons joke. Half of my half of my personality is from The Simpsons, but um, <laughs> this was just a. Uh, Madison is known for having a bunch of lakes around it, and uh, one year the winter started off by having like ten days of like negative ten degree weather, and it didn't snow yet, so the oh. lake ice got really thick really fast, but you could still see it. And one of my portfolio shots is from that, but I also like just. Looked down and I was like, oh, neat. Just took a photo. I've never seen ice that's this reflective, like a mirror. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen that since. I think that was 2017 or 18. I mean, in Utah, it probably doesn't get cold enough. No, but I've been to like Colorado, shot some ice there, and uh, I've been to some cold places. But yeah, usually the ice is covered in snow. Exactly. Now that I think about it. Yeah. So it's kind of rare. Yeah. This is like, usually it's like milky, though. You know, you don't get like an actual reflection like this. Crazy. Yeah. I, th I think it was just, yeah, the, since the cold air came in so fast and hard, it, it froze really nice. Dude. Is that Big Sexy? Big Sexy. Big Sexy. What are you doing? Not, you can't put him down. He uh, jumped in and jumped out. He was uh, licking my ankle. You're teasing Fucking us. Cameo appearance right there. <laughs> hey, licking my ankle, kind of like Eric when we're camping. That, <laughs> that dog loves to sit on me whenever I'm at Paul's house. Dude, he loves you. It's so weird. Why is that weird, man? I can be loved. I'm lovable. You are lovable. <coughs> you are lovable. I think he slept with you a couple nights. <laughs> Here he's going. To... Oh, let's get into it. Let's yeah, do man. it. You ready, Brent? Yeah. You got all so, your you got your notes next to you, so you can no. sound articulate and like you know what you're talking about. 
It's gonna be straight off the dome. Um, straight yeah, off so the chrome dome. First of <laughs> chrome dome. <laughs> first of all, uh, picking images is incredibly difficult. I spent way too much time on it, but I was mostly trying to look for folks that hadn't been featured on the show or to get some fresh stuff in. And second of all, there's just so much great work being made by so many people sure. now. <laughs> um, so starting this off with um, he's, Theo Bossboom is on my, definitely on my short list of favorite photographers. Um, he's unbelievably like creative and his photos are so unique and uh, he's really good at working in projects and I own all his books to like some of my favorite books he's ever had so I wanted to give him a shout out um, this one in particular um, you can probably guess why I like it um, but it's just the the I guess it's like a checkerboard where the bottom left top right are dark with white accents top left bottom right light with dark accents and then i'm sure everyone's everyone's taken photos of you know water and waves coming in uh before it's absolutely infuriating to try to get the exact you know frame where like the water is in the right shape that you want and just to see this one be so perfect like i can't believe it it's so perfect. Yeah, this photo is insane. I, it's in shape by the sea, right? It is. Yep. Yeah, I remember this one from there. Um, I've got some thoughts on it. I'm just pouring a beer real quick. Yeah, I really, I really like this. This is a this is a killer uh, uh, pull, uh, Brent. Really. Uh, yeah, great call, Brent. Kind of pulls you through the image, just. I mean, there's so much to see here. You kind of like pull yourself through left to right, straight through the middle, and it's great. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's crazy, like what's what's happening there. So it's obviously it's just deeper on the right, and then shallower on the left. But what do you like? What a unique spot, you know? I mean, obviously an amazing photograph and incredibly well captured, but also just like a cool kind of phenomenon. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. And uh, this whole book, Shaped by the Sea, is amazing. I actually bought it together with his uh, newest book, Back to Excellent. Iceland. Both of these are awesome. So mm -hmm. you can kind of save on shipping if you order them together. Mm -hmm. A little cheaper for international shipping. But uh, yeah, I mean, Theo's work is obviously incredible. I think everybody watching this already knows that. If not, definitely right. got to go check it out. It's one of a kind. Uh, his visualization is crazy. Super unique and personal work. Um, but yeah, this photo is just insane. Like, it almost feels like too good to be true. Like, uh, this is like if you were designing a scene, this is like the way you would do it. But I think it would come off as like contrived, you know, because it's like so perfect. But we all know this is an actual thing that happened in nature. I think if I was designing this scene, I would like put something in the top middle. But I'm almost glad that there isn't because it the fact that there isn't anything there directs your attention toward the rest of it a little bit mm -hmm. better. Yeah, Definitely. I was just kind of open. That's true. That's kind of yeah. like a because leading you in like there's this really strong leading line between the dark sand and the white water straight down the middle. But yeah, there's nothing there at the end, but it just like makes you focus on like the actual subject of the photograph, which is that part where the sea is like parted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nuts. Awesome symmetry here. Yeah, the clouds are helping a whole lot. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, his stuff his stuff is really great. It's like it's like what I aspire to do. The, the, the way that he shoots is like what I have in my mind for what I want and can never quite make it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 nice. All right, before we go to the next image. Gonna introduce this beer that I cracked up in. This is Double Dry Hop World Champ from Highland Park Brewing in Los Angeles. Shout out to Martin Gonzalez that brought this one out for me when we went back back in together. Um, it's a double IPA. I guess it won like a gold medal in like uh, one of those competitions. So they they rebrewed it to celebrate. All right. Would you say one, the brewer? Yeah, Island first Park? of all, are you having a, are you stroking out right now? 
Uh, <laughs> what's going on there, dude? <laughs> nah, I was just uh, looking up the hops because they're not on the can. It has Mosaic, Citra, and Vic Secret. 8.3% double IPA. Hmm. What, yeah, Highland Park. Brewed? I haven't I haven't shared them before, but they're good. What town though? Los Angeles. Hmm. What? You're not saying that right. Los Angeles. There you go. There's, there's my boy. There's, there's my boy. I know and love. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> lazy, dude. Come on, figure it out. Come on, dude. I cracked another one as well here. So, um, all right, I gotta get on this. <laughs> so, this is uh, uh, another Fiden's uh, beer here tonight. So, this one is Orchid, which is a double IPA. Um, it's one of my favorites of theirs. Um, but it's a straight up Nelson's, comes in at 8%. Um, but it's just always kind of consistently really nice stuff and um, pretty tropical at times. But this one's not quite as much as I would has remembered so that one is awesome and the triple version they did it did of it that one time was incredible oh yeah that was i would love to see that again one. i love that one that that one is that one that one hits good i think that's the one i found out i found under my couch outside after a few months that was blue skies was it mm -hmm. i remember because that one was like, amazing <laughs> i was just like are you kidding me i've got this thing under my couch outside yeah outside <laughs> all right so uh just real quick before we get into this one mortalis sour ale this is the one you had the other day eric right i think you had this yeah, one yeah mortalis Sorry, another half one. collaboration yeah another half right so uh oh shit i just had it was... that one just oh, has okay, so concord yeah, grape up. coconut and granola yeah, it blows my mind that you have the shit memorized, dude. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. So 6%. And uh, I've been looking forward to this one ever since I saw it, since I picked it up at Jimmy's house the other day. So you shake to it up well. One. Oh, yeah. Fuck, I always forget that. No, I didn't. That's, that's that so one be, right I'll there. i drinking my pole at the bottom. Yeah. Hey, the Tigre, that one right there in your hand is <laughs> one of Bennett's like favorite sours right there it's like adult grape juice it totally yeah. is i always so fight with so i good. always i always fight with you over that one because you're like come on dude let's get that and i'm like i don't really like grape flavor and i'm like oh, there's granola and it's like okay that's good for them. <laughs> you liked it though you ended up liking it i loved it it was good it was really good yeah i was happy they did it again this year that was one of my favorites last year yeah it was super good Appreciate you. Oh my god, that's good. The coconut, the coconut is awesome. Uh -huh. That's it right there, right? Yeah, it yeah, it is the coconut. Wow, that is really good. Damn, I need more of that. Hey, Mike, I'm I'm super stoked that you're drinking something else than the uh, seltzers the other night. It's, it's. I know that was a bit of a downer. Yeah, Brent, it's a great episode these, though. Just cut these buzzes off whenever you want. <laughs> They'll ramble on forever if you don't. <laughs> He's, all right, he's so actually, true. Yeah, all right, listen up. This next photo is by <laughs> um, this is TJ Thorne. Um, he's the only one that I picked that's been on the show before. Um, had to give him a shout out though because he is, um, I'd say, the photographer I've learned the most from over the years. I took like I've taken multiple. Yeah, not Eric. Definitely not Eric. That's messed up, Brent. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Eric. Mental note. Mental. <laughs> Sure right, gloves are off now. You sure to tell I'm gonna to bust out. I'm gonna bust out the embarrassing photos. I didn't. I didn't want to do it, but now I'm. Gonna <laughs> be... um, yeah, I mean, I, I first took a workshop with him and uh, and Ted Gore in 2015. It was like their one of their first workshops ever, and uh, a cu couple cents. But um, anyway, he put out this series of three photos in 2020. Um, they're all called surface tension one, two, and three. This is surface tension one, but I felt like people didn't notice how incredible they were. So I wanted to give them another, another shout out. So my thought was that maybe I, like they're best when you view them large. So, uh, mm -hmm. on his website, you can see the detail, maybe just on Instagram, you, you, you lose the magic, but so 
to me, when I, when I see like a thumbnail of these, my first thought is it's like a, an evergreen tree with snow on it. And then like winter holly, like berries or something. And then you see the title surface tension and you look closer and it's like, wait a minute, it's water. That's incredible. So you have like plants under the water, you have the texture of the water, you have plants on top of the water and you have the overcast sky reflecting it. Um, and then you like, you keep looking closer and there's like little bug, bugs crawling around that are nice details. Um, yeah. Shout out to his most recent book. This isn't in there. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's in this, but, uh, his book's fantastic. it's incredible. Like with, with this book alone, you know, a hundred images, uh, how much diversity he's been able to get out of the same, you know, it's, it's not the same subject matter if you pay attention, but you know, water in general it's not redundant at all it's pretty crazy how how what he's done with it you know totally um and he he puts a lot of emotion and thought into his work so you can when you flip through a page of 100 abstract photos you like at least i start to maybe put myself in his shoes and think about like what what the colors and the shapes and tones and stuff are representing so I'd recommend that book as well, but anyway, uh, surface tension. Yeah. I think it's just a remarkably well seen subtle photo with just incredible, incredible detail. It's just fun to look around like a where's Waldo kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when I first saw this one, I thought like, um, you know, like the wider sections are like where the water's reflecting like cloudy sky. And then the transparent sections, I thought that was just like at an angle so you can like see through the water. But is that actually like out of the water? Like those parts are not submerged, you think? Uh, wait, which parts? Like the grasses, like, cause they, they don't look like they're underwater. If you look at them closely, they're really detailed. They're not, they're not like ripply. Yeah. I was thinking that the grass parts were underwater, but the, the leaves are above the water. But I'm not sure. Yeah, that for sure. But it's a super trippy if if the grass is underwater um that's a really trippy effect how it's like you know like milky white and then like completely yeah. see-through right next to it in different sections got that little bug right there yeah maybe yeah. jimmy can uh, teach us a lesson about surface tension you teach uh, that kind of thing i don't he's a I science teacher no. so he knows everything well i can okay. usually make things up because science isn't real but um <laughs> No, it's the, the, I mean, it's the, the one, the little green ones are duckweed, um, but uh, it's hard. It, I do think like maybe it's just kind of like pushing at the surface of the water, the, the algae, the filament stuff. They kind of bulge the water surface so you're not, you're not seeing the sky above you. Right. <clears throat> yeah, really nice composition cool. here too, how he like... Uh... Yeah, just like this nice subtle like diagonal repeating diagonal lines pattern mm -hmm. right Very all three out. i'm just kind of eyeballing all three they're just they're great yeah there's one with larger leaves underneath the duckweed yeah that one's got Super more cool. like the nicest colors it's got good color contrast to it yeah and then the the other one has my has like the most consistent pattern i think this one has the most interesting like detail so maybe i should have submitted all three <laughs> but no it's super sweet i'm glad you brought this one up i mean this is beautiful yeah. so what do you yeah, think definitely. is like the most uh life-changing thing photographically that you learned from tj i'm gonna put you on the spot because you said that yeah he's taught you more than anybody else and uh i definitely jealous. taught you bro <laughs> wait wait to, wait to flex eric i like it uh, it was, I mean, so I started in 2012 and I didn't ever meet any photographer for three years. I was just by myself doing stuff. And so when I, the, the workshop was in Columbia River Gorge, um, outside of Portland. And really it was just seeing the effort that professionals like TJ and Ted put in to get a photo. It wasn't like you just walk up to a waterfall and start like snapping shots. It was, you scramble every single possible area uh, around the waterfall. Like you take a million shots of different water movement. You stand in the water, 
chest deep if you have to. You scramble across sketchy logs that are going over a raging river. Um, and then you do that five more times because it's overcast and the light's good and it's good for that. So you do that five more times in a day. And then you do that for five more days. I think it, that was probably the number. I mean, they taught me all about composition and post-processing and stuff, but just like literally seeing them go through that um, changed everything. I was like, oh, this is what you do to make good photos. Yeah, just being like as intentional as possible with every detail. Yeah, yeah. Every step of the process. And just working hard. So how come you haven't applied that in your own photography? <laughs> <laughs> I, I so knew you were setting him up for that. Oh, dude. <laughs> Still waiting, man. Way too much work, dude. You slow, dude, you slow played that so good. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Fucking Bennett's a scientist. <laughs> um, do you remember, like, who the first, like, actual nature photographer was that you found? Because I still remember mine. Hmm. Good man. question. No, so I... I, I, I <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm thinking back to like 500 px, and the, the guy. How did you even find out about 500 px? Mm, probably, probably from Flickr. My guess is like, you know, in 2012, if you search nature photography, Flickr was like the thing that was big. Okay, because so I was gonna say like I don't think they had recommendations, but yeah, if you're just on there nerding out, searching stuff, you could come across it. Good question. It's not yeah, like I, now where everything's shoved in your face, you know? Yeah, you had to look a little harder. Yeah. I I I remember mine. Mine was uh Ted Gore. I was randomly searching yeah. on Google images, like Death Valley maybe or something. And I found his work and I was like, Jesus Christ, like you can yeah. do this with a camera? Like that okay. that that totally <coughs> excuse me. Opened my mind to like what's possible. Um yeah, just like, uh, and honestly, like I was blown away by some of his intimate scenes he had of like Badlands, not even like his, you know, crazy sunset type stuff that he's really well known for. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, you can like zoom in on stuff and like feature things. And like, also it was just like, you know, I didn't even know those kinds of Badlands existed, like that kind of color and stuff. Like I'd never been in Death Valley before. And uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I clearly remember that it was him. And then from there, I found like Aaron Babnick, Alex Noriega, you know, all that crew, yep. Mark Adamus. Yep. But he was the first. And I actually sent him an email. I don't know if he remembers, but uh, I was, you know, I just like was praising his work and stuff. And yeah, I just sent him a nice email. Did you ever meet him? Yeah, I've met Ted. We went backpacking together in the Enchantments uh, in 20... oh, right. 2017. I think that's the only time we've ever gone out shooting together. He's He was awesome. I I wish he was uh, still doing it, but he, he hung up the tripod a little bit ago, but he uh, arguably the, I mean, it's between you and him for strongest hiker I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, he did the Appalachian Trail and stuff, but yeah, he was just uh, incredibly skilled technically and he he was very inspiring. So when I saw him and TJ, put it together a workshop i had to i had to check it out and that's cool that was a huge turning point and it's a mountain goat i've seen it yeah. some people say but i just i just walk normally i don't know good dude Especially when you're carrying 12 beers <laughs> oh, i'm just excited to crack them open dude, tw especially when you're carrying 12 beers down a rope I'm just hurrying so I can drink them before you guys get there. Fucking legend. So I was uh I was glad you featured one of Peter's images and uh actually that you uh featured an image of this canyon because then I can talk about myself, which I love to do. Cuz uh, I know I know right where that's at, dude. <laughs> I can make this all about me. Um <laughs> Peter is actually a buddy of mine. We've gone out and shot together several times, but not for many years. Uh, I think the last time was when we actually backpacked this entire canyon uh, with my wife, Giselle, and uh, Pam Pamela Barnhart, another photographer. Badass lady. I think she, she's, she was in her 50s at the time, and she was like in front of all of us uh, hiking like 16 miles a day because we had to do this in four days, and it's a uh, 54... 
it ended up being like 56 miles total because we did a bunch of like side treks and stuff and we went through the slot canyon entrance which adds several miles but uh that was one of the most incredible backpacking trips i've done and i i would probably do it again but uh yeah thank you peter for getting the permits and for inviting us that was that was an experience i'll never forget i knew i knew you and your wife did that but i didn't know uh peter was with you yeah he he invited us because uh i guess i think two other people were going and they bailed out like last minute he told us like a week before and we're like yeah we're down and we went cool yeah that's cool peter's a good dude i've never met him or anything but um he was probably one of the the photographers that I, that caught my eye early on as well. Um, yeah, he's been he's been around forever. It's it's kind of insane. Like when you go to his website, he's got some really. Good stuff. It, it's staggering. Like the things he's seen, it'll be like yeah, the extensive like body of work. Like yeah. he's made so many photos, so, and like and he likes beer. He, he uh, beer. some of his photos will be like. Like this is a single exposure, but there's a rainbow and a fog bow and a moon bow and uh, lightning bolts, and it's like, how is this even possible? Uh, he he must just get at it. He must, I think he just lives on the side of the Grand Canyon or something and just sees it all. So Peter Lick can do that. <laughs> that's, a good shout, that's a good shout out. <laughs> just saying. So there, there's a million photos, I guess, that could have featured, but... Um... Well, and, and you have them. We're going to be here for the next 16 hours. Look yeah. Up <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're really putting some time here, Brett. Okay. <laughs> we'll start, with, we'll start yeah. with this one. Um, it really just... I think it's perfectly composed. Like, if you look at all four edges of the frame, everything is, like, spaced out nicely. All the lines that lead out from the center do so in, like, a in a pleasing way, I think. Um, in particular, it makes me think about the magic of canyons is that you never know what's around the next corner. Even if you've been in the canyon before, there's a lot of ephemeral things like like the mud we see here. Um, there could be new surprises. Um, so I can just imagine turning the corner and seeing like reflected light and then like these crazy mud patterns and then in particular, I've never seen those, the rocks that are like embedded in the mud. I've never seen that before. It's super yeah, cool. I was just wondering about that, like it's detail, because so cool. you don't notice it right away. It looks like maybe somebody walked through it or something, or like maybe an animal. But yeah, when yeah. you look, each one has like a little pebble in it. Like maybe they fell over the canyon rim, like while it was wet. Good. It's almost like they fell and like it was like frozen in time, though. I mean, right. that, this that's is a really definitely deep what I think is most too, remarkable like, about it. Yeah, just killer cool. textures throughout the whole image, and uh, uh, um, a little darker leading to the light, a little cooler leading in. It's 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 great. Good call, Brent. Great shot. Think, Peter Peter's a great dude. Yeah, I think he made more photos of this, like you know, more intimates of the mud cracks. But man, I feel like I could shoot that scene for like an hour or two. Like, there's so much stuff in there. That yeah, just looks, looks fantastic. a lot going on. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like if I even like notice this, I myself like wouldn't shoot it because I'm just like too dumb to like try and make it work. Because it's like, <laughs> you know, there's like mud cracks. I'm always looking for like perfect mud cracks. I don't want anything like interrupting them or breaking them. But I really like how he like embraced this and turned it into a great scene instead of mm -hmm. shying away from it like I would have. Yeah, we we've seen that from you, Eric. But it's a good call out. <laughs> <laughs> he has another black and white one <clears throat> similar kind of a like phenomena on his um in his portfolio um just emphasizing more of those splashes that those rocks are making mm. pretty wild i had never heard of this guy before so i'm glad he shared this always nice mm. to hear a new name on here but um yeah that is so killer pretty sure this one's a painting and not a photograph buddy <laughs> yeah it's like um i heard about him from the nlpa he won um i think like intimates or okay now i know why he chose this because brent is gonna segue into how he won photographer of the him. year in the natural landscape yeah. photography awards so of course he had to choose this to have an excuse because i knew he was gonna share that he always talks about it what yeah. <laughs> 
the NLPA is a great way to find uh, new new work. Uh, so this is one of them. Anyway, uh, Stuart, <laughs> he, he lives in uh, the UK and he's known for his photos of like the Lake District in particular, but and other surrounding areas. Yeah, I mean, this is these are the conditions that we all hope for. I'm a total I'm totally a sucker for frost. And this is some of the nicest frost I ever did see. Uh, combined with the the perfect side light that's like spotlighting the main subject, but not lighting the background. So there's great separation, the great color contrast between the plants at the bottom of the frame, the coolness of the dark. I mean, it's uh, it's like a painting because it's like if you could make all the choices to be absolutely perfect, this is what would come out. <laughs> it's incredible. Right. No. Um. With you on that frost, I mean, whenever I see the frost or the snow or the ice, it's like, it just, it just. <laughs> it's pretty rare though to see frost like this, at least where I live. Like you need like the perfect kind of, kinds of conditions uh, for this. Cause if you just get snow, especially like with a tree like this, like the snow isn't going to be able to rest on this tree at all. So it's not really going to get like snow caked like you want. It's most likely hoarfrost, um, which is usually comes about from fog and it's not common you know as as the temperature of the air gets colder it can it holds less water jimmy can probably tell you this um <laughs> so apparently or, not yeah jimmy can't wait to talk about it in a jimmy's so, looking up hoarfrost but he's coming up with the wrong kind of searching hey, you, need, <laughs> you need to lay off jimmy dude because yeah there's no w on that one jimmy yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, my only fans horror frost anyway <laughs> yes <laughs> perfect <That's good>, dude <laughs> yeah so for for there to be fog when it's cold enough is like not terribly common and it just coats everything in moisture and then it freezes and that's it's just a photographer's delight yeah the lighting you have on this one is is i mean and the lighting's just really, really great and the super super sweet image and then i was just flipping through stuart's stuff and it's really great and i just thought this came off following yeah yeah good call super good call i think it's kind yeah, of cool awesome. too you get a really good appreciation for like how like what it feels like to be there because you've got that where the light is hitting the frost is gone so you know you're right about that freezing temperature um and it kind of adds that dynamic aspect to the scene uh makes it makes the image even more engaging i think <coughs> you know, like that's really good yeah and i love how he has that direct light on the trees because then you have that cool blue background that's in the shade because you mm -hmm. wouldn't have that otherwise and just all be even and kind of neutral but that yeah, that so really uh, yep. helps separate the front tree quite a bit. And, and then just those doesn't... like uh, I've been shooting like orange and red ferns like that around where I live. But yeah, it looks crazy how they're all covered in frost as well. Don't you, don't you love those fall ferns? I mean, I ran into those a week ago up in uh, at Mount Adams, and they were just absolutely perfect. Where with it with the right sequence of trees or whatever man it's just did you see that new photo that joe roshback shared like dude. five days ago dude that thing was so legit and then on his story the he shared like a behind the, fog, the scenes yeah, video so and it looks exactly like the photo like he did not even do anything to it and it's the most perfect scene like dude, jesus christ dude, it's thick as fuck yeah that looks i when i when i saw that i was just like wow that's really great and I had been shooting like aspen trunks with red ferns um, like a few days before. And I saw that. I was like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Uh, just, not fair. Yeah. Just delete your shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he stroked it on that one. Really good stuff. Yeah, and once that sun hits it, it doesn't it doesn't last long. You know, it's so fair. Yeah. True. Yeah. He could probably come back to that see that spot, you know. Every oh yeah, day. that frost started yeah. to melt as soon as this was probably like right yeah. as the sun first hit it, and he shot it, and then yeah, yeah. Two yeah. minutes later, it looked totally different. 
that's that's a good point like the timing on this is pretty crazy yeah, so no, he, was, he was probably kind of already set up or shooting and then this happened and it was just like bam i know he's got a, a youtube channel um i i don't maybe this is on it that'd be really cool but i'm not sure he, he like talks about photos he makes like filming himself in the field or i think so i've, I've only seen a couple but yeah i think so nice. yeah i'd never heard of him before so i'm so excited to check out his work yeah killer killer uh killer pick. yeah brent's brent's got some taste surprisingly yeah. he doesn't fuck around i hadn't heard of this guy either where's he from so he's he's uh from minnesota i i wanted to feature some upper midwestern folks as well um so joel truckenbrode uh wonderfully scandinavian name um I learned about him from f-stop collaborate and listen and he doesn't have any social media he which uh, i just I, found out yeah, yeah. Right. uh there's an interview with him in on landscape yep and then i just went to his website like yesterday and it was literally down so i don't even know if he exists anymore but <laughs> um oh, yeah. i i saved some of his photos earlier just because i liked his work so much he spends most of his time in, it's called the Arrowhead, but it's like the northeastern corner of Minnesota and um, like the Boundary Waters and the shore of uh, Lake Superior is an incredible and uh, underrated part of the country, but he makes all black and white photos and they're all just super tasteful and like, um, they really speak to me because they show off the best, the best the upper Midwest has to offer. Um, and he's, I don't know, I, I feel a lot of like emotion coming through his images. Uh, I'm kind of a curmudgeon when it comes to like social media and stuff as well. So like, I really respect that he's making things just because it, he loves it and it makes his life, it elevates his life. And that's the only reason he does it. He doesn't like mm -hmm. care about accolades or uh, anything like that. So like, like you yeah like me winner of the nlpa in 2022 <laughs> yeah instantly in your instagram bio big banner on your website t-shirt <laughs> um so yeah I just, I just respect that a lot so um in this image in particular um i i think about like like music is on one side of my brain and photos are on the other and sometimes like something short circuits and i think of relationships between them and one description i think of when i see these boulders is like they're like rhythm to me they're like rhythmic there's like a rhythm to the way that they move from the front to the back and the way that the 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 shape of the land peeking out of the water um i don't know it's hard to describe it's just very pleasing to me and i i love the subtle highlights from the clouds and it's just very serene so this and, has that like really cool, like uh, kind of old school film look where it's like, you know, four by five and it has like the scene has like amazing depth, like stuff like right in your face in the front. And then like it quickly like gets smaller and smaller because like the angle that they're tilting at, like that, that's mm. something that like a lot of people do now with like wide scenes. But like, you know, it's kind of that old school look where they do it with like intimate scenes like this, you know, no sky or anything like that. Like it's a small scene, but they give it this incredible depth that like sweeps in from the front that I really like. That's not super easy to do. And, and it's really simple. And it just like kind of flows. It's it's a very nice image. It's simple, but it's like really engaging still. Um, For sure. It's not and like boring, you know. Yeah, and it kind of just pulls you through, like you like it, like you look at the front part of this, and it just kind of pulls you through the entire image. It's really great. Yeah, it's very like compositionally pure. And when I, I looked him up, obviously his website's down; he doesn't have social media. But what I saw from the on landscape, there's a handful of his other images. Like his compositions are all very, very strong in this one. Too. And I mean, this is just like rocks and water but he made yeah. it super compelling and then black and white too yeah. so like he got rid of color and yet it's still super engaging he's yeah. not relying on that color crutch yep good call yeah it's not deficient in by by switching the monochrome he's, he's not losing anything 
that's that's my problem whenever i switch to black and white i feel like i lose like the essence of the photo like i think color is what draws me to most scenes in the first place in the field so then like that's why i like never convert to black and white because that's not how i visualized it this is this is nice though because it pulls in those textures Mm -hmm. no totally it's super uh congruous with the the scene very complimentary and like theo's image earlier like if this was on a clear day, he would have lost a whole lot to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. It's subtle, but that texture, that cloud texture definitely elevates this one because it would have just been like really dark water without those white clouds yeah. reflecting. Yep. And the contrast would be like cool, too strong. Yeah. Yeah. What a loss, like the ethereal feeling it has. I think I've only ever made one black and white image, but I'm, I've been thinking about it a lot more. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it and like, you can be much more liberal with uh, dodging and burning. Like if you look closely at Joel's stuff, um, you can see it like here, the the top left has some burning uh, for sure, but like it's, it's subtle and it doesn't like, if you were to do that to a color image, it would affect color. And it, I feel like you would, it would make the photo look kind of like cheesy and fake, but in black and yeah, white. Yeah, like really gaudy. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, it's not that you can even, it's not like getting away with it isn't even the right term in black and white. Right. It's like, it's like, I don't know, it's classier and it, um, it's more effective. And um, I've had it on my mind lately. I might, might make some, some soon. I see a lot of black and white work that I love, but I just, I don't know. I just don't see those. I don't see scenes in black and white in the field. So mm -hmm. it feels weird to like do it as an afterthought because it's like, I think you really got to visualize the scene in black and white. I think some of these other savages have some black and white. Yeah, I love shooting. Jimmy, Jimmy has a few. Yeah, I love shooting mm -hmm. black and white. Yeah, Jimmy's heavy handed with that shit. For me, it's like a big sacrifice getting rid of the color. Like, I, I really rely on color, I think. And I mean, I see in color. Like, I don't know. I, I love the colors of, of the world. Well, you, you do a really good job with the light. Who, yeah. me? Yeah, fuck you. Right, but if you're doing black and white, <laughs> the light is still there. Like that shouldn't really. No, no, but like just the way you control it and the way you visualize it in your work, it's it's different than you can't just like say, okay, well, this is this is. Um, I'm going to convert this to black and white. It's just the way you see it. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but apparently I'm not so good because uh, he learned more from TJ. So. Yeah, that, that's what Brent was saying earlier. So it's kind of weird, but a little uncomfortable. <laughs> But we're working through awkward. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's awkward. That's the way to put it. <laughs> Man, I wish TJ was here right now. <laughs> Dude, this would be a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll never have TJ. Here. I'm not going to run the risk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can fight over me. It'd be there'd be so much censoring censoring gonna be like, well, you know that part didn't really come through. <laughs> yeah, you got the final edit. Yeah, what TJ, I think yeah. your your internet's bad. You're cutting it was, out, bro. It was it was really good material. You're in Vermont, dude. <laughs> it didn't translate. <laughs> so, Jimmy, when you're shooting, do you do you visualize in black and white or do you do it? Do you figure it out after the fact and post? He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He just goes out there, sprays and prays. Spray all that pray. high CM stuff. You think that's intentional camera movement? Got two cameras yeah. going. <laughs> um, yes and no. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's some scenes are so muted for color for me because everything's just so green here. Mm. Um, <clears throat> that, you know, you kind of work at it that way. Yeah. I'm wondering if like if I want to approach it like should I figure out how to see that way first or yeah can I figure it out later I don't know throw throw your camera in like sometimes when I'm feeling like I don't know maybe I want to shoot black and white just throw my camera in that mode and so your your uh, LCD screen is showing it to you in black and white and that kind of helps a little bit mm -hmm. um that's nah, that's just the JPEG preview. So the actual photos, uh, like the raw file, is still gonna be in color, but at least like in the field, it can kind of give you an idea what it'll look like black and white. That's a good um, idea. I do that occasionally. I didn't. I 
switched to mirrorless pretty recently. Um, and I usually shoot through my viewfinder, so I could do that now. Could look yeah, you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You yeah, use your shooting with? more than the the LCD. Yeah. Hmm. I know you, you use your LCD, but I like I you saw in the other photo I have that like dorky hat with like the blinders. Yeah. I like to have just you know like complete blackness and uh, like. I feel like when I use the screen, there's like always glare and like I can't see as well. And so I feel like, uh, I mean, I use a viewfinder when I have to, but I feel like when I use a viewfinder instead of the, the LCD display, I get like too hyper focused on the center of the frame. So like everything in the center will be dialed in, but then my edges will be like messy or like I'll overlook stuff. So I mm -hmm. got to use the, I got to see it a little bigger so that I can like see the details and not like overlook anything. Because when you're looking in the viewfinder, you're like you're so close, you can't actually see the whole scene. I feel like you can't see it edge to edge without moving your eye. You can't see it all at once. Whereas with the LCD, you can scoot back. You can see the entire image without having to shift your eyes at all. I I totally switched. I went from like the I I really love looking through the viewfinder because before it was the LCD bigger picture, kind of like you're saying, Eric. But now I'm just like. It just seems so much more defined and more like subjective to make adjustments when you're looking at it through that more confined space for me anyways. Sometimes the sharpness can be off too. So I even like check my sharpness by zooming in and looking at the LCD because that's actually going to show you how the image is going to come out. Whereas yeah. the viewfinder, like you can change like the focus, you know, like according to your eyesight. And so it's not super, super accurate. Yeah. I wonder if it changes you know, like a little dial. I wonder if it changes the diopter thing, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it could be lying to you. <laughs> I don't know. We'll yeah, get it is a nice image, this. though. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're going to zoom in on all of uh, Brent's images in a little bit at 300%. The other cool thing he can... <laughs> we're going to pick up some detail. <laughs> the other cool thing I like about with, with digital and black and white is that you can, you can grab the... I can control you can control the, the contrast pretty good <clears throat> by moving the color spectra around. So if you want to, if you want to fade reds to, you know, to blend in with everything else or make them pop or whatever you can, which I, I struggle with in color. I mean, probably in this photo, you can see, you can see lichen on the rock and because it's a different color than the rock, I imagine you can select it and either right. bring it out or change. Yeah. Yeah. Or or make it fade away. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's a great image though. Glad you shared it. Yeah, very cool. Sure. I can share you some Sorry. of my personal stash of Joel images if you, if you want to see more. <laughs> yeah, we'll see those afterwards. Yeah. Um how did you find Lawrence's work? I know Lawrence, I met him because he took a workshop with TJ and I in Olympic in it was either our 2019 workshop or our 2021 workshop. I can't remember, but he's a really nice guy. And he actually was out here last fall uh, here in Utah. And I met up with him for a day. So you might not know this about me, but I entered this contest and then I won it. And uh, <laughs> when you win the contest, they send you the book. <laughs> and I, I found this image in the book and um, in particular, um, <laughs> Tim Tim Parkin's description of this one in particular was incredible, but it's it's the composition like gets better the longer I look at this. That's probably a common thread in the photos I'm sharing. Is like I I love images that make me linger for a long time. But the more I look at this, the more I notice just how perfectly spaced out every every tree is, particularly the main tree in the middle, going from bottom left to top right. Like you can look at the foliage of the trees behind it and see like just how amazingly spaced out they are um mm -hmm. he put a description in the extended pdf that talked about like just composing this for like an, like hours <laughs> like just playing with these trees and stuff and and that just i can picture myself being there and it's just one of the most wonderful uh ways to spend time so i I think about my own memories fondly when I see this kind of image. I love the reflected light. I said, uh, yeah, I like light. how he kept the contrast really soft with it. 
like they didn't push it too hard it's like very painterly pretty even mm -hmm. yep yeah these trees are super crazy so i can see why he spent hours shooting them super crazy uh angles and everything and they're all bending and they look very alive like they look like he caught them like in motion he calls them dancers in the meadow yeah so, totally yeah. yeah yeah and that and that canyon wall behind it just offers like a little another dimension of those trees it's, it's beautiful yeah i agree that that color in the background i think is what's most unique about this photo i mean in addition to the you know perfect composition but if you if you don't pay attention to that background wall everything in the foreground is kind of drab you know what i mean there's not a lot of color and all the color is in the background which is almost kind of the opposite of how you know most people um photograph scenes it's so it's it's kind of it's very unique in that sense and that color really does pull you through the image um hmm. good point so yeah that's really good yeah and, like, that, and that one tree right in the middle it just kind of like it gets framed up there and I, I mean, the, the canyon shooting in the southwest, this is what it's all about. You get that reflective yeah. light, and it just really showcases uh, this kind of stuff. It's fall, but it's not even Very like peak, peak fall or late fall. It's like, it's kind of early fall still. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the cool thing about down there is like, I mean, you have this, you have this window where pre, during, and post where you can really make some beautiful images. Yeah, I mean, anyone can make good images in Utah. Like, it's not all you have to do is move there and become like a superstar photographer. Yeah, it makes your life a lot easier. Yeah. Oh wait, hey, Bennett's back. Hold oh. on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> retract, retract. Hey, zero delete. effort. Hey, You're gonna delete. shit out books. Delete this shit, <laughs> Bennett. <laughs> oh yeah, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> Try coming to Vermont or Wisconsin or. Exactly, New York. I mean, that's where the good photographers are because, you know, they're working with shit. So it's not just handed to you. <laughs> Put, in yeah. work. Put in that work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just envious of these scenes. You just You just can't get these out this way. You get different scenes, but it'd be nice. Hey, heard the, <laughs> Jimmy, you heard the invite earlier. Do, the, do a thing. I'll be there. At the New York's towards the top of my list, though, man. Like, I absolutely I want to go to the Adirondacks so bad. It's kind Anytime. of like all right. I'll let you know, but to me, it looks like it's uh, northern Wisconsin on steroids. It's just like the mountains are higher, the lakes are bigger. Similar kinds of subjects, though, to what we have. Yeah, the forest type bit is probably identical. Mm -hmm. Just Beers don't share a tent with this not... smelly bastard. <laughs> 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 After COVID, I can't smell anything anyway. Ah, oh, you guys might be the perfect couple. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, power couple. Big spoon. <laughs> Damn it. Yes. Can I, can I hey. talk? Is this a good spot to talk, talk about another beer? Sure. It's always a good spot. That's what the show is for. Always, man. Right there, boys. Hippogriff. You guys know what we're talking about right here, right? Hippogriff. That's it, Eric. Nailed it. So it? hippogriff, passion I'm fruit, to make this run orange, a little smoother, dude. <laughs> lime and marshmallow comes in at seven percent. Bennett, it's uh, it's 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 fantastic. I mean, I, there's no one else does a smoothie like these. No, they never mix, miss. Mix I drank that one while game. camping a couple weeks ago. It's super good. Did you have two of them or one of them? I still have one left, so I got two. Yeah, I just I just had the second one. It looked like it freaking got shot out of a cannon, Jimmy. But it's <laughs> my fault. <laughs> yeah, some of those cans are looking pretty brain. rough. You just see the yeah. unbelievable how they it's didn't like, pop. Dude, it's beyond me. This thing looks like I opened up with this. I I opened this thing with a sledgehammer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even stand up. Those were the good ones. I kept the. No, dude. I kept just the dead ones. Yeah, this thing—it was legit. <laughs> Bro, thing it was legit. <laughs> yeah, all their sours are super good. Yeah, they. Did. Oh. Pain. Not pain. Maddie, this pain. Guy. 
Got time. Well known, well known <laughs> photographer from Colorado. <laughs> Glad you're featuring host. him, man. Giving him some airtime, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's nice. Yeah. Um, so he runs this contest, which I entered and won. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, How'd you do this year? <laughs> oh, really bad. I entered a project and didn't get past raw. So Bob verification. <laughs> yeah. Um I was gonna ask you something else. Uh so uh Brent is also in on the fantasy photography league. Who was your pick for this year? Who would do the best in the competition, Brent? Oh, is this public? Um Yeah. We uh, talked ben about May. it in Sarah's episode. You said you watched it. I, I snatched up Ben Mays as fast as I could. He's a he's a beast. Yeah. I, w- I was going to feature him, but he'd been on the, I think it was on the first or second episode. So Yeah, we featured like a phone Whoa. image from him. Yeah. Was he still available? No, uh, Brent yeah. took him. We So I came up with this while we were backpacking, me, Brent, and Alberto Rodriguez and Martin Gonzalez. Um, I was like, let's make it a little bit more interesting because we were talking about the competition who we thought entered and stuff. And uh, that's when we came up with the idea to make bets. And we're on the but Brent snatched him right away. We don't even, we're just like thinking off the top of our head. We don't even know who's entered. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, yeah, yeah, totally, dude. Totally. But it's good, it's going to be good. so great when like whoever wins like the gambling pool makes like way more money than the person who actually wins the contest. <laughs> Next year, it's going to be big, man. I'm going to be taking yeah. bets publicly. So that's right. Only Everyone fans. Get ready. Only fans. It's going to be at MGM. <laughs> Only fans. We're going to freaking bring this shit down. So anyway, uh, uh, Matt Payne, he hadn't been on the show yet. And uh, I've enjoyed watching his progression as a photographer over the last few years. He's really evolved and his uh, the breadth of his work has uh, widened a lot. And, um, you know, he did mostly like wide angle mountains back in the day. And now he's doing, you know, coastal intimates in Spain and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, sorry, Joe. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really cool to see him, um, you know, keep progressing. Um, this image in particular is probably my favorite of his. I think it came out a couple of years ago in a fall collection. And he used a, a term from, I think I first heard it from Alex Noriega. Um, it's like a epic intimate, which are probably my favorite kind of photo where it's like, there's no sky or anything and it's not necessarily a wide view, but it's still got like epic conditions. Um, as much as I love quiet work, uh, can't turn down epic conditions when you get them. So yeah, just, you know, perfect fall colors, beams of light that everyone wants. It's fun to explore the frame. You see the little like illuminated bit of yellow in the middle is a great detail. There's, there's interest with like the ridge and the, the river, the bottom. Um, yeah, super jealous. And I would, what I wouldn't give to see a scene like this with a camera. Dude, dude this is, this is a really, like, really, really love this. Like, like that just cool to light just pulls you through the image. And to your point, Matt, Matt has really come a long way. I mean, his his stuff is really starting to like. He's come a long way. <laughs> no, his his stuff is. I mean, it's it's really. Um, I really enjoy seeing it now. It's. I mean, he's got some really good stuff. It's yeah, it's almost like in. a complete one eighty. Like if you if you saw his older stuff, it was like lots of astro, and I mean that's how a lot of us were too. You know, like I was shooting mm-hmm. astro, yeah. pretty much predominantly when I first got into nature photography, and then sunset and sunrise only with my wide angle lens glued onto my camera so it's been cool to see him go through that similar evolution but then also arrive in his own place where he's creating really unique work that isn't derivative yeah it's super cool and matt's a great dude he's all right yeah i mean we've been on a couple of with him he loves the beer i'm sure we'll have him on here you know relatively soon and uh yeah, he's a great guy it's gonna say he'd be a, the perfect candidate for this show Oh yeah, dude. When he was in yeah, Portland, we'll when he was in Portland, we hook up and go down to the uh, Horse Brass or Belmont Station or whatever. He um, he's got a he likes the beer. 
and uh, certainly likes the photography. Well, that we're going to definitely have. It's come a long way in like picking NLPA winners as well. You know, like toward the beginning, first early years of the contest, kind of. Like, <laughs> like, it was bullshit, man. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know what he was smoking. Until he, re- until he refined his palate a little bit, and like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah good. he'll he'll probably figure it out by this year, this coming year. <laughs> it's good when Klaus wins. Dude, Brent dropping the hammer, love it. <laughs> hey, you're on here next week too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to bring Eric down a peg, you know. Yeah, we need some leverage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 high enough that I can handle coming down a couple pegs. <laughs> you can, you can take some shots. Allegedly. Rude high. This is this is a this is a great Ray is image. jealous uh, of the shirt, too. He wished he was it though, Brood High. I love this image and I think uh so I, I spent some time like while you guys were talking inanely in the background, uh looking at it and <laughs> like images like this are just so hard to process or at least to process well and he you know in addition to everything you guys said with like his vision developing and all of that i definitely agree with but like you know the processing this image is is really really good it's subtle it's difficult to do that with this type of contrast and light and stuff that he has so um really well done matt i think a lot of people would have been really would have been really tempted to push the contrast to bring out those light rays yep. and the blacks. And that would have yep. just like muddied it up and it would have exactly. looked weird really quickly. Right. Exactly. So def- definitely well done. Yeah. It's in the sweet spot right now. All right. Yeah, man, I haven't heard any. There's a great one to end it. So another, um, I mean, he's, I think he's somewhat popular. Um, he has a bunch of Instagram followers, but he hadn't been on the show uh yeah arnold heitman has a one of my favorite books um eric just showed um it's called Jaime. 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 yeah <laughs> i don't i don't know if the e is pronounced or not um but he's from norway i believe and he appears to be one badass motherfucker if you go through, <laughs> if you go through his book he talks about like there's photos of him like standing and like ice cold water and like talks about like he's lost feeling and like his toes and stuff like permanently in some of them from just like being out in the cold uh in scandinavia a lot yeah Um, it was really hard to pick a photo from him uh he has a pretty wide range of of styles and one of the more predominant ones lately is more like dark moody mountains um and he's lost and like people. every image he makes is impeccable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a lot of ice stuff, but um, this one in particular always <laughs> st- stood out to me because like when I'm out in the upper Midwest in the snow, like this is the exact thing that I'm looking for. It's like, I always have this kind of scene in my mind, but I can never quite make it, but it's got like the perfect fluffy snow uh, on the ground. It has the, gorgeous like snow texture sticking to the side of the birch trees it has the s- snow still sitting on the branches that hasn't fallen yet and then like it has the gorgeous clean river that doesn't have like gross ice sometimes there's like not very good looking ice uh that that forms and it's just um it just it makes me think of the best parts of winter when i look at this image in particular and of course, it's much better in print. Uh, I'd buy the book uh, for sure. So super yeah, sweet. It conveys it conveys like the essence and feeling of winter so well. Right. That's hard to it's do. It's really well balanced too. You know the way that those two trees on the right, two trees on the left, the river in between them is composition compositionally so so perfect. Really, really but some, which sometimes is that so can tough be to like, do with a messy scene well but also that can be like obnoxious you know when there's like two trees on either side like framing a scene yeah but here it's like yeah. subtle enough where it's like effective but not overly obvious right 
I like I like the yeah. work I like the work you put in and digging deep and like getting a really nice variety of different images. I mean, yeah, I agree. You, you can twenty four hours. Yeah, dude. I mean, you can. I'm <laughs> serious. I mean, you can really tell that you like kind of went in there and you were very um, conscious of who we've had on the past, and you've really uh, showcased some really good stuff here. I fucking love it. That's great. Thanks. Agreed. Yeah, it's, it's super cool. Yeah, Brent and I are always like sharing books and uh, photographs with each other that we like because we we really enjoy like going on people's websites and taking a deep dive and finding new stuff. So I knew he would be somebody like he, he's he been on my mind to have as a guest at some point. But when we had a last minute cancellation and we needed to find a new guest, I knew he would be able to throw it together in time. So wasn't yeah. he like the 30th person you called, though? <laughs> no, dude, you, 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 you the 29th, you, Jimmy. He nailed it, dude. You, you did a really good job. He's like, this loser Jimmy doesn't have, doesn't have plans on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, this is a new Madison, Wisconsin. What could possibly be going on? That is true. <laughs> that was part of my consideration. Yeah. Let's look at the nation. <laughs> That's so good. What? Errol's it I'm looking through his portfolio kind of like for the first time I'm like oh my goodness you've never heard of him before I I mean I I I have a Jamie. I follow him but I haven't really looked that much but I should have vetted all you guys before creating the the host of this uh you know the host lineup of the show because yeah that's pretty disappointing you know what your palette he, come on he is his website has like hundreds and hundreds of images there's yeah. like a bunch of collections and they're all they're all really cool so yeah yeah get a beer and do a do a deep dive that's the way to all do of it his, all of yeah. his work has like a very similar like unmistakable aesthetic like this it's just very pure very clean yeah but not in like Sim a contrived way like simple like he's he's trying to like only do a certain thing and like staying within like a box it's like he somehow manages to like find that like in all different kinds of landscapes and it's just the way that he naturally sees the world it's not something that he's forcing or like trying to do it's it's really remarkable and he does a lot of square yes. uh ratio stuff which is H super hard, hard. Oh, yep. God, yeah. i uh i was looking for a new ball head for my tripod my i like my old one but it when it's below like 20 degrees fahrenheit or so it starts to get a little loose um i think something you know, like the grease gets too viscous or something so i'm like i should buy a new one looking for recommendations who should i reach out to oh the guy that lost feeling uh in his, in his limbs permanently from standing in the cold i'll reach out to him <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah he, he, had, he got back to me with a recommendation bought it and uh worked perfectly but um not That's sponsored cool. but the uh the really right stuff um like what is it bh40 or something mm, what, 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 I got wrong with their stuff. what else are you gonna go with i mean literally like I made that mistake years There's ago. Nothing. You buy something different that may be less expensive, but not the best quality, and then eventually you land on some stuff that's like you, you just can't go wrong with their stuff. Yeah, yeah and you should you really never can. like this is the first one I've had that has the clamp, and I'll never go back to the knob. Got it's so clamp. quick. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just, for sure. Boom, it's it on. so much better. Solid too. Like there you can't mistake when you look at a knob, you don't know how tight it is. When you look at the clamp, oh yeah, you know, and then you like tilt off. your camera, and your whole setup just falls off the tripod. <laughs> Dude, that happened to me at Rainier a few weeks ago. I had a I had a one fifty to six hundred on, and my whole shit fell right off the fucking. Oh, that sucks. It didn't it didn't mess anything up, but it was just like my hands were cold. It was cold. It was twenty degrees, and it's just one of those deals where you're just like you think you're locked in, but you're not, and your whole your whole kit crashes to the ground and you're just like, fuck me. Cameras you know? and so, lenses are surprisingly durable. I drop my gear all the time. Like accidentally. Dude, I was, dude, I was so, sh I was so shocked. Like I dropped that whole thing and I just, I put it back on and I'm back. <laughs> my, my number one move is leaving the back of my, my pack open 
and forgetting, and then I like go to pick, pick it, it up, up and throw it on my back, and all my oh. shit goes everywhere. <laughs> That's the best. Oh, it's a bunch oh of dude, it's classic. Empty beer cans and lenses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mine's mostly empty beer cans, but <laughs> good of you to pack it out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of Kodak um, kits. Kind of a funny story about that. My first book, Conversations in Nature, like, you know, the cover photo, this leaf on the oil. The first, that was like a five day backpacking trip I did with my wife uh, a few years ago. And um, I came out with like an entire gallery of images. It was like 50 or so images of like leaf scenes and things like that from that trip. But the very first night, like before I even took a single photo, like the first spot I was set up at, I set up my tripod as high as it goes, center column fully erect, camera on there, <laughs> 70 to 300 mounted on. I turn around to like get a new SD card or something. And I just hear whack and the whole thing just oh, just God. tipped over from the from from the optimal height all the way down onto like <laughs> it was like it was like there was like slanted ground next to it too so it fell even further. It wasn't flat, oh, just Jesus right onto God. solid sandstone. <laughs> And the lens just cracked off. The LCD screen just completely exploded. And the viewfinder got messed up too. So all those images that I shot on that trip were with a broken ass camera that didn't have an LCD screen. The viewfinder had like a big black spot on it. And my my lens was like the, the lens hood was shattered and everything. Like broken ass setup. <laughs> that is so messed up. That's funny. <laughs> it's an awful sound. I dropped my, I had a, a 70 to 200 F2.8 that like landed on pavement and that just that sound is just like yeah just that yeah. unmistakable like, like wow oh. yeah and it, it, was, it, was, it was done it's just not even just that's just the sound of money exploding <laughs> exactly <laughs> like when you almost when as I bad rotated, as dropping a beer on the ground rotated the lens you could hear the glass <laughs> moving on the inside of the <laughs> oh, <that's so laughs> i don't think this is repairable well was that was that all eight yeah, that's all the ones that you chose. Uh, let me see if we got anything else here. See if we can. Uh... Hey, what'd you? Oh, what'd, what's you up? what'd you give him eight, dude? That's a lot. <laughs> I trusted him. Dude, friend coming through tonight. <laughs> so this one is from your newest gallery, which is like a bunch of resurrected files uh, yeah. from Southern Utah, well, Southwest in Love general. That. Um. I don't know why. Why do you think you didn't process this one initially? Like, why do you think you skimmed past this one? Because I think this is insane. I've extensively explored Southern Utah, all the canyons and stuff, and never seen sandstone like this. That looks like you're tripping on mushrooms. Like, it looks like it's insane. Like all those little ridges, and then you got that like the yellow striations in it, and all these little potholes. It's just <laughs> nuts. Like it looks liquefied. It looks fake. Dude, but, uh, this is dope as fuck with like those mm -hmm. shadows and the the highlights in the front. This is fucking money. Yeah, in terms mm -hmm. of subject matter, it's super unique. But then also, you composed it really well. The lighting's really nice. Like it was shot really well. Uh -huh. So why why do you think you skimmed over this? As I kind of wrote about <laughs> my newsletter, I have no idea um, <laughs> for most of those images. Um, so I, I'm, I'm guessing here, um, I think I took this in 2019. And for this one in particular, I think I just thought it was kind of ugly and off balance. Like if I had to critique it, it would be that the middle of the frame is like full of darkness. And but that's what helps the other stuff stand out. That's getting hit by the reflected light. Like it gives it great dimension and depth instead of it all being flat. Yeah. For sure. I, I think my collection that I released um, from 2019 on that trip was more is more into just like classical Southwestern beauty. And this one is kind of just like I named it haunted because it just looks scary. You know? Yeah, There's, yeah. It's like it's like a little grotesque, you know, like kind of kind of skeletonized uh, sort of. Yeah, kind of creepy and uh unsettling but i i think it's fascinating yeah. thanks yeah that's awesome there's that what's that term for um when you're scared of like uh patterns like irregular patterns 
Um, Jimmy probably. I knows forget it. what that's called. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Does, yeah, Jimmy's Jimmy a psychologist. Uh, I can't right, think, I'm gonna Google it. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it trip, definitely kind of uh, has that, but it's I don't know. To me, it's fascinating. Trypophobia. Like, Trypophobia. Yeah. Trypophobia. T R Y P. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like yeah. Interesting pick. Thanks though. No, I love this one. It really stands out yeah, to me. Yeah. It's, it's really great, Brent. Who 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 selected this? Me. Yeah, you did a good job. Well done. <laughs> good job, Eric. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. It's like the um, you know that mask from uh from Scream. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like that's looking back at me in this. Yeah. Too, a little bit, just indifferent. Yeah, this one could have been on the Halloween episode. Yeah, I know, but it, it didn't come out yet. But uh, just just like how thin, like some of those like uh, like fins or like you know those ripples in the sandstone get Spicules, are so yeah. crazy. Like it looks so delicate too. Like that's yeah. it's really unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like veins, you know. It, it's like uh, it's like the upside down world in Stranger Things or something. I can't. I, I just can't guys, not. You guys every, don't watch TV, every time you but, say. Every time you say Sansa, I cannot think of this as bone. Like, this just looks so much like bone. Of course, I'm the only person here who's dissected a dead human body, but like, that's what the center of like bone, like sinus bone looks like. I don't know, maybe Jimmy has, but like, you don't think Brent it's, has? It's Creepy remarkable. Ass. Look at him. He's smiling. <laughs> With his death metal band. Yeah, when he's, uh, when he's uh, slapping the sacrifices. bass. He's, he's slapping the bass. Most of the most disturbing serial killers come from Wisconsin, too. Um, yep that's true <laughs> hey that's not a bad that's not a bad point anyone want to go camping the nicer ones are from <laughs> michigan right head toe you got a fucking shower <laughs> uh, that's a cool image thank you it's yeah, super, super sick thing. what's the really uh, impressed it's Fran, what's good. the scale here like if you put like like a quarter on there like what, <laughs> i can't figure out how big these things are I think that I think this was, was probably like four or five feet wide, oh, something yeah. like that. Okay. Like seventy millimeter. Yeah, I definitely had my seventy to three hundred on when I shot this. I was looking looking up, pretty sure. Yeah, that's really wild. So delicate. Yeah, it looks like you could just like break it. Mm -hmm. Did you carve your name into it after? I, I see it at the bottom. <laughs> oh yeah, there it yep. is. Yeah, His watermark. Brent. Yep. Brent was here. Instagram handle. Hey, you gotta grow your following somehow. Oh man. Whoever picked this, I was So all what's over. funny is this one was like Me on too. my I short picked... list. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, I love I think it. all three of ours had because this one is so oh man, I, I uh, yeah, and I actually picked this one too. So what's funny is in our last episode, I was talking about Jim Basia and how he always comes out to the mm. south, Southwest because there's like nothing to photograph in Wisconsin, like jokingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then like everybody in our, so I was like, so you, ha you have like a gallery, you know, you have quite a few images from Wisconsin, surprisingly, you've, you've been able to make it work, which is super impressive. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, when we had the idea to do this, I was like, I'm going to pick a Wisconsin episode to feature that. But everybody picked the Wisconsin episode pretty much. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, image pretty much for this episode. So I was like, okay, so I'll, I'll pick something from the Southwest, you know, something different. But uh, this was the one that I was going to pick because it is from Wisconsin and it's incredible. I yeah. love this, dude. Is it snowing here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. This is, I, I actually, I get, I get credit for picking this one, so... Um, dude <laughs> we're you're so lucky because i mean i, I have this thing in my sights you know it's the the spring colors are just so wild like you can see like how the trees are just budding out a little bit there's some reds in there and such and get that shoulder season where it could easily just snow on you and mm -hmm. it's just it's such a fleeting season and you, you just captured it mm -hmm. perfectly It'd be such a killer print like just yeah mike michael order it yeah, big massive oh, print. It would look. I mean, this thing would look so. Oh, here mighty. we go. Brent's getting something. <laughs> he's he's like looking at a wall. Oh, dude, Whoa. right there. There it is. <laughs> I printed it. I got my own personal like portfolio. Nice, so, dude. It's it's idea. really it's really really nice. I mean, it's so sick. 
Thank what you. is that uh book you have? It's like is it, is it like sheets that you can slide prints into or something? Yeah. Um... Like an album? <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Dude, you're such a bastard. Me? Yeah. He's well, not fucking... I'm interested in, in what Jimmy and uh what Brent's doing. Where there's He's photos. not fucking sliding prints in there, dude. That's fucking publication shit. Uh, I'm sl I'm sliding prints. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> dude! It's not some fucking envelope. <laughs> it is. It is. No, it's not. Like, no, it's like blank, sleeves. Blank oh shit! I guess sleeves. it is. <laughs> Brent, what the fuck are you way doing? To go, way to go to bat for him, though, dude. I love it. Dude, I had your back the whole way. You just <laughs> yeah, dude. He's a ride or die. You, you put that fucking like. Wallet size. It's a wallet fucking book, goddammit. <laughs> Man, fuck you, Eric. That's that's uh that's Brent's portfolio that he brings to like interviews and stuff, you know, and goes off his work. Yeah, when you, when you meet like, him in the field, he'd be like, "Yeah, you can see my photos." I'll pull it out and I'll flip through. I saw all, Hulk Hogan there. on the opposite page. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, <laughs> Brent? I kind of like I like the idea of having a book, but they seem really expensive and a pain in the ass. So I have my own printer, which is expensive and a pain in the ass. Um, so I just every weekend I, I make my own one print per week and I just pick whatever I'm most stoked about. Um, that was one of them. So, yeah, thanks for picking this one. This is actually like unreleased, um, but on my website, I have like four galleries. One of them is focuses on my home area and like- That's a uh, homeland, right? Homeland is called. And uh, in 2022, when I got my new camera, I like, I feel like I turned a corner in Wisconsin and I started making just a ton of shit that I love. I'm like super excited. And I have like so much now that I'm like, I can't, I think this should come out in a book or an ebook. So I'm sitting on this giant pile of Wisconsin images. Oh, new stuff that you haven't dropped yet? Yeah. Mm. So, and then I, I've been mm. like, been, uh, I regularly re curate my other galleries, the other three. And they're, the quality of those keeps getting higher, in my opinion, as time goes on. I keep adding more stuff to it and removing old crap. Meanwhile, the Homeland collection is like stagnant because I didn't want to release stuff. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is no longer reflects like yeah, the quality how you that I want. Now. Exactly. So I, I did put a few new ones in there that I'm stoked about. This is one of them. Um so glad and glad uh, you like it and uh, that, that's it. the weird thing about like sitting on work for a long time. It's like people aren't seeing the photography you are they're seeing exactly. the photography you were yeah so that, that it doesn't really bother me but i always think it's funny when people are like you know really liking stuff and it's like oh man like if you knew what i've done with those ideas since exactly. then like right well you just highlighted a photo from 2019 that's five years ago <laughs> it's it's yeah. sick though dude yeah uh, thank you so this one, I'm actually going, this is where I'm going tomorrow morning. It looks like this all the time. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it was a spring day in April. And I, in particular, I just, I'm not unique here, but snow in the spring or in the fall just makes for great photographs. Um, mm -hmm. I saw sure. the, I saw the forecast, chance of snow, unseasonably cold, um, one April day. I called in sick to work <laughs> and uh, went to the park and um, I made a lot of photos that day. There was that, this is like the place with some of the most elevation change in Wisconsin. So I'm like high up on a bluff, shooting dappled light as it moves over the land. I hike back down the bluff and like, I'm probably two miles from my car. And it, it felt like a, um, a movie where like all of a sudden the wind picked up and it was like cold and I was like <laughs> you know like something's changed like things are happening and then like just this really fast cold system came in and just dumped a bunch of snow for like five minutes I, I seriously had an adrenaline rush and I was like mm. running around with my tripod 
shooting whatever I could. Um, and this one turned out, um, really grateful for that, but trying to think of a title still, uh, it's untitled on my site, trying to think of a title that encapsulates that, um, is just, I don't, that rush of excitement is one of the most fun things about nature photography and yeah, it may shock you, but I don't feel it a ton in Wisconsin. So, so, um, <laughs> for that to have happened, that was super exciting. I love this photo too. Yeah. I love when you come away with a photograph that you did not anticipate at all. And, you know, it could be in terms of subject matter, you know, you found something that you didn't even know would be there or the lighting situation or the weather conditions that you didn't anticipate. Well, I kind of anticipated the weather. That's why I went out that day. Um, yeah. That feels good in a way too, when you're like, oh, my instincts were on, but I didn't know. What but to still, expect. this was just like a five minute window, you know, it was yeah. very reactive. Yeah. So it's not like you were set up here and waiting for the weather to come in. No, but this is why, I mean, this is why everyone should shoot local, no matter where you live. Like if you look at my work at other places, it's like overcast and like, you know, uh, direct light from, you know, a clear sky day, just having shadows and stuff interact like fairly common stuff. But right. when you look at my Wisconsin work, it's like, Oh, there's the ice that uh, that formed that one year, and it's never been like that again. Or here's this like quick cold snap that I ran to. Like you only get stuff like that when you're out there all the time in your local area. What's super funny is when I first met you, or like we first started talking online, like uh, probably in like 2018 or something, uh, maybe earlier than that. I don't remember. Um, we didn't first meet till 2019 when you came out here, but. Uh, I remember you kind of complaining, you know, how like Wisconsin sucked for photography and this and that. And mm -hmm. then it's kind of like the same thing kind of happened to me with like uh, the stuff here in Utah that's like close by. Like I would think it was beautiful and I'd go on drives and stuff, you know, in the fall and stuff like that. But I always felt like it was really hard to shoot, like kind of like impossible to shoot in a way. And then eventually, like I just felt like all of a sudden just clicked and like something like, I don't know, mentally, I just like unlocked the area photographically mm -hmm. and then now every time like this is where i love to shoot the most in the fall and uh you know a lot of times in the year um it's weird how that happens like you you probably can't say like when exactly that happened but uh yeah i don't know it was around 2021 and i've released some of that work but most of it i'm just hoarding <laughs> what do you think was like the catalyst for that like um part of it honestly um was getting the 100 to 500 lens like always having a telephoto on me was huge um yeah unfortunately gear does matter a little bit <laughs> that helps yeah the more you also... can zoom in the less yeah. confined you are like geographically because you can yeah. just isolate right. stuff more right. and it doesn't matter what the surroundings look like yeah part of it's my vision too i think i just uh you got lasik <laughs> I did. That was only uh, 10 months ago. Um, that helps. Um, yeah, I think just my, I started like shooting small scenes, you know, 2017, 2018. And I think just after a few years, I've started to figure it out. And I mean, I've been learning more about nature in Wisconsin. I'm far from a naturalist, but I've been becoming more interested in what grows here and why and what's native and what's not and like i would like to hope that things like that come out in some way in a photo you know well yeah i mean uh the fact that these aren't like icons and stuff but you still make like compelling images that reflects the relationship you have with the place yeah right zombies <clears throat> with an h does wisconsin have any icons um the closest thing is probably the Apostle Islands National Lake Shore that I was talking about earlier. But is there like a like a composition or like a oh, landmark structure or something like? There's there's this like a um, mesa arch, kind of, but probably just local. So in Devil's Lake State Park, which is the most common state park, there's a thing called Devil's Doorway. Um, it's like this big rock formation that's like a doorway sticking up from the a bluff. There's a there's a big hill called Holy Hill that has 
amazing fall colors and they built a big gorgeous stupid church on top of it that's pretty common to see um that's all i can think of yeah not, not a ton of icons yeah i can't think of any whoa yeah i saw this one so yeah i chose this one and i uh uh going through your what going through your website brian it was it was so tough to pick an image because it's just so uniformly excellent and i i too really did want to go with uh one from your homeland um collection uh, but when i saw this one it just it absolutely stood out to me for so many reasons there's so much to love about this photo um you know and a lot of them a lot of them probably stand out and, and are, are kind of obvious but number one your treatment of the light in this image is fantastic um you know it's perfectly balanced you know cools and warms um the leading line of the water like pulling you right into the center of the photo you know where that you know brilliant yellow light is 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 absolutely engaging the reflection is cool too um but again I think most people probably watching this episode are photographers. And so I think most, I don't think people, most people, people are watching this. <laughs> the 12 people, to, I think we have 12 it's, followers now. The four of, the four like of us, the four yeah. of us are five. So we, the four of us here can appreciate how difficult it is to process an image like this. Um, just getting that light balance right. I mean, you maintain detail in the shadows and the highlights are perfect. Well, when you get direct um, so light on those trees, like the leaves and everything, like that's not easy. To so hard. It is so hard more. to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, not only is it a, a fantastic image from a composition standpoint and from a light standpoint and how engaging it is, but it's really, really perfectly and expertly presented um so yeah there's no way as soon as i saw this there's no way that i wasn't going to choose this one what i like Thanks, most Mike. about this one is that i've been to this place so yeah <laughs> exactly i can tell yeah. my friends you know and they they see uh, this picture i can tell them my stories where, where where's your photo from it though Eric? Yeah, it's another uh, section of the canyon. Same place. <laughs> uh, Mikey will be getting one of I've those soon. <laughs> nice. It's all about me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this was from uh, the, the first trip I did in uh, to the southwest in 2018. Ended up. Yeah, you have to backpack out to this canyon too. It's it's yeah. uh, it's a good Solo ways backpack. out there, and and no one really goes there. So like when I went, nobody else was around just mountain lion tracks the whole way <laughs> in brent's aroma <laughs> still <laughs> there to this day <laughs> so I know, no one goes Keep some mountain lions away <laughs> it's like bear spray but different fucking <laughs> 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 <Like> animal <clears throat> i love this photo too i mean it's it was one of the best nature experiences <clears throat> had i think so like i'm i'm just happy whenever i see it so i'm i'm grateful that a good photo that you like came out of it um <laughs> one of my favorite things was uh like I, I hadn't seen a human in like three or four days and uh when i got back to the trailhead where my car was there was uh three dudes just like next to this truck and i was like holy shit and we started talking and <laughs> We kind of like just hit it off. They were just like three guys that had been, they've they worked for the NPS for like 30 years and they'd been backpacking together for like 30 years, just doing crazy shit. And they were doing this like really long through hike of, um, that goes from, I think the Grand Canyon up through Utah or something like that. Wow. And uh, we hit it off and basically uh, just like hung out like all night and uh drank beer uh smoked some smokables listened to we listened to black sabbath dude that's um, a good night yeah nice uh, shirt bro Paul's kind of night right there and like i don't remember their names we didn't exchange contact info they had me take a photo of them but i don't have any photos of them so it was just like this completely ephemeral like just like a one and done yeah dude like I, I look back on it so fondly. It was wonderful. Yeah. 
It's like you and you and Eric sharing a mountain house in the back country. <laughs> yeah, one night stand. <laughs> we're we're twenty miles deep, son. <laughs> <laughs> I got a spork. I'm always wondering, like, if our wives think about that, like. Why are these guys like going so far out in the middle of nowhere just to hang out with each other? Like, what are they up to? <laughs> hey, Spoonin's out, Forkin's in. Brokeback Come Mountain. On, Brokeback Mountain House. <laughs> That's so good. Nothing wrong with that, though. No. Hey, get your salt. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> We think both of our both of our wives have been backpacking with us though. They get it. Yeah. Yeah, just get some the whole stuff. story though. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the pick, Mike. Yeah, man. Love this image. It's great. Yeah. Um, so you and your wife had the goal of visiting all the national parks in the US before you die, whenever that is. Um, after I die it might be okay. Yeah, true. Keep keep cruising around, cheaper airfare, <laughs> not to pay for gas. Um, how many more do you have left? Um, I've been to 39 and there's 63, so 24. Okay. She's been, she's been to 37, I think. So Which uh, two did you go to without her? I went to Pinnacles because I used to work for a company based in San Francisco. So I went oh, so before you guys met? No, just on a work trip. I flew out wow. there and uh, just hit it up. And I think Capitol Reef. Really? Well, She's Capitol never been Reef. there? Because you've yeah. been to Capitol Reef a bunch of times. Yeah, a couple times now. Um, and there's a couple that she had been to before I met her. So we've never been to Zion together, but we've both been to Zion, for example. So uh, the one time Brent didn't share a tent with me, he left me out there alone in the dark, was when we went to Capitol Reef. <laughs> uh 2022. early 2021 2022. in the winter 2022 <laughs> and uh it was like single digits at night yeah it was January. everything was freezing yeah it, he was uh <laughs> sleeping in his warm ass car with the heater on and stuff and i was out there in my tent mm -hmm. that's, that's really that's really messed <laughs> he had to, like, up like revive me in the morning <laughs> that's really messed up uh eric <laughs> I, w I wouldn't do that to you no i know you wouldn't bro when you put it that way, uh, I'm kind of an asshole. <laughs> Brent's like, oh, man, I fucked up. Yeah, he's a total <laughs> asshole. <laughs> All right, back to the Wisconsin photos. Just wanted okay, to break so, it up a dude, bit. dude, this is the fucking shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even joking. Dude. So I submitted a couple of other photos before this one. And I was just cruising through your website, which is absolutely phenomenal, by the way. And I remember seeing this one on Instagram or something a long time ago. And I was like, fuck me. This is so good because I'm all, I love winter images. I go to Canada just about every winter of Banff, Jasper, whatever, snow, ice, trees, um, Tetons, Yellowstone, all that shit in the winter. And this just really grabs me. You found the perfect specimen here. It's, it's the perfect tree. Um, it's got that frozen fog in it. I mean, it is just so good. I'm, I'm sure Eric was hating on me when I was like, dude, which one are you doing? Are you doing this one? Are you doing number two, three, four, well, five? Well, and, and uh, this one was in his archives. I had to kind of dig for it when you told me you wanted to share this one to dude. download the JPEG. It's not even in his main portfolio. I'm I'm probably gonna get this one because I've got this wall that just would really I, I love my stuff's dog shit, but I would really love I, I like <laughs> other people's work and like this just the tones, the texture, the symmetry. I mean you could really put this in a lot of spots in a house and it really would accent really well. You and I are gonna talk <clears throat> later about this. Sure. So figure it out, dude. <laughs> Brant, what's like the idea behind your main portfolio and then your archives portfolio? Because you have a lot of really good stuff in the archives. So mm -hmm. like what, yeah. what, what determines that? Um, my main thing is that when I, when I look at other people's websites, I figure out my own preferences. And one of them is that I don't like 
galleries that are too big. Like Okay, but I, I got a critique for your website. I know mean, like once you enlarge an image, you can like click on the arrow and like, you know, scroll through. But dude, the vertical scroll, it's not good. <laughs> Super annoying. <laughs> like through the through the semi thumbnails. Mm -hmm. I'm not down with it. I use Adobe Portfolio because I'm a cheapskate. And it I prefer free. like the grid, so, you know, where you can see like almost every image in the portfolio, you know, all the thumbnails. So, you can click on the ones you want. My, it's just easier my, to navigate. My You're like kind of about... forcing people to look through every single image in a way. Yes, if, that if, is what I'm doing. If they don't get, <laughs> they don't get turned off. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I do that on purpose because I, I don't like the idea of someone looking at a grid of images and being like, like just like glancing through like nitpicking, 30, yeah, like thirty. Yeah, like, cherry eh, picking okay, it. next, or no, just like just even glazing over, not even enlarging any page. of them. Exactly. So I'm like, I'm gonna make you look at this larger. Um. <laughs> anyway, so I don't want my galleries to be too big. They're all about like thirty to forty images right now. So I'm continually like ongoing basis with every release. I remove some and add some. Um. And I guess with this one in particular, so th this was from like the most beautiful I've ever seen Wisconsin. And I've lived here my entire life. There was a period of three, three-ish days in January, 2021, where the entire like county was covered in rhymite. So not a uh, hoarfrost. Um, Dude, not yeah, with a W though. No, no, the W. That led Jimmy to the wrong website, <laughs> dude. I'm and trying to clear my history. Yeah. Brent, <laughs> hey, Brent. Hey, Brent. One question. Yeah. One question. You ready for this? Yeah. How many fucking cigarettes you smoke after you shot this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Had to cool down. Okay. Yeah, dude. I mean, no. dude, if this thing popped up on the radar, fuck me. I'd just be like, I'd just be over there power smoking. And I, this like, I don't even, I don't like even a, sm dude, I don't smoke. I hate freaking cigarettes, but it'd be just be just like, I'd be hot boxing shit over there. Cowboy killers, camel milk <laughs> filters. I'd be cowboy killing lung dart and son of a bitch. <laughs> this, uh, this looks like a cottonwood tree to me, but I think you said it was an oak tree in the it's a description. For oak, yeah. It's like <clears> the <throat> coolest tree Wisconsin has, these big ass oaks, um, in, in like a savanna area. There's a single tree uh yeah wow so it's just a crown of one big tree it's, this is a big one for sure so i have like three images from this single day already in my homeland collection and i'm just and i have other wintry ones too and i'm just like i can't have the whole thing be winter so i uh i guess i chose other ones and put this one in the in the archives maybe it was a mistake <laughs> It is so good. It's it it's, really is. Man, I wish. Yeah, what's funny is like I, I was anticipating all these guys choosing like your Southwest stuff, you know, like you got great stuff from Death Valley, great stuff from Southern Utah. Uh but um I was like, yeah, I gotta showcase his Wisconsin stuff because it's really remarkable that he's been able to create unique and compelling imagery in a mm -hmm. very boring midwestern state so um but yeah it's funny all these guys on their own just chose stuff from wisconsin pretty much so i, I yeah. changed my picks to not be redundant <laughs> yeah you just you just didn't want to be a follower well the the southwest is a big part of uh your passion for nature as well so i, I definitely wanted to showcase that and uh this one is a this one's a heater this is the the storm that easy uh, we had permits for Buckskin Gulch and yeah. had, to, had to call an audible because this whole weather system hit the Southwest. And is that and the same is... storm where like two guys died? Oh, I don't know. In, in Buckskin? I think it was. Uh, yeah, like two last uh, year? Two hikers. No, I think this was 2022. This photo is 2021. 2021. So this was like right after our trip. Where did we go? This was after the Grand Gulch backpacking? No, we went to Wyoming in the fall. Oh, okay. Oh, so this was like winter-ish? No, no, two weeks later, 
this November, happened, uh, October, and this is when you shot all those um, snow plus Aspen fall colors images. Same so Oh, right, right, right. And they and were that like, dappled light is that dappled light with that sky is just man, it just opened up for you. How, how hard? I mean, were you like hard as so water? good? Oh yeah. <laughs> Here's raw dog in nature right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a single exposure too. Like I was fully, I saw as Jesus. the dapples were happening, I was like, oh, I'll probably time blend this. But like, this is already like, it, it, it does the Complex trick, enough, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. What happened to those two folks? Those two people? Uh, there was like a flood. It, it might've been the next year. Um, I remember like Michael Bellino was going to go and he canceled his trip and then Dude, yeah, these two hikers got flooded out and they died. They, we, they just got swept away. They didn't even find their bodies. I was with him. We 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 switched from there to Death Valley because of all the carnage. It was just insane. Wow. Yeah, we switched to Grand Canyon and Bryce Canyon mostly, and did a little pariah. But like, looks like that was a horrible choice, man. <laughs> It was October and I got to see you. Could have died, there. dude. <laughs> it would have been. I mean, probably great. You missed well. out. <laughs> so I got to go back get another permit sometime. Hey, how about with the BNV crew? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That'd be fun, dude. It would be so already, fun. Already, already backpacked the shit out of that thing. So do do some uh, on location filming. <laughs> Bring the beers in the backcountry. Eric yeah. will carry him. Yeah, Bennett will carry <laughs> so that shit. He's already done that canyon, so he doesn't need to bring his camera. So he's freed up to bring like 20 beers. Jay, just You beer. guys don't need to bring your cameras either. I already photographed every square inch of that thing. <laughs> hey, just beer, just beers and wag bags. <laughs> the full wag that, bags, the used wag that's bags. That's it. That's it. We'll yeah. carry those out. <laughs> Keep them in the cooler. <laughs> don't want them to ferment and explode. <laughs> <laughs> So when I, when I got to the Grand Canyon, it was uh, completely socked in. You couldn't even see anything. I remember walking past. And you it. got down on your knees and you started praying to the, the gods of metal. I was carrying like my tripod, you know, and uh, a guy that walked by me was like, not much to see. And then I just like, I waited there for like, I was there for like a few hours, but just I made like a ton of images and like, you dumbass. You just waited like 30 minutes you would have seen like the most incredible shit so the light started coming out like pretty quickly after you got there uh, it, it took a while um i think i was there for probably five or six hours mm. what about weren't you with friends too they didn't mind waiting around in those conditions uh, a lot of them went back to the car <laughs> but i the they're all patient. waiting on you they uh i found the most patient wonderful people uh on the planet they are very they wait for me a lot yeah, because they weren't photographers. Nope. Yeah, it's hard to come by. But they, I go, I travel with these people and my wife regularly, and like they'll they'll even wake up at the ass crack of dawn to go hiking. They're just like, if Brent tells me to, I'm going to do it, and uh, <laughs> it usually pays off. <laughs> yeah, you see a lot of images from the Grand Canyon, but this one feels very unique and yeah, it's remarkable, remarkable to me. Yeah. Thanks. Very unique. You know, in a way, like the the weather and the dappled light that you, you know, just amazing. Like, if it was like a clear day with blue skies, I think you lose the depth and drama of the of the place. I mean, there's just so much going on here. Totally agree. Totally agree. Super soft. Really love it. It just reminds you how remarkable the whole place is. You know, it's like. Oh my mm. God, like mm -hmm. Water a, that. Unbelievable. It's a, it's a big part of the uh, Craig Childs book that I'm reading where there's like a ton of water underneath the Grand Canyon, just like flowing everywhere and all these like caves and canyons and stuff. Like there's still water everywhere. Yeah, um, subterranean. So not only is it like an incredible grand thing to see, but there's like unlimited secrets everywhere that mm. humans will probably never see. It's just like so cool to think about. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. Endless. Mm -hmm. Was this a difficult file to process? I think kind of like with 
with Matt Payne's image with the rays of light, it's more like um, bringing out detail, but not too much. Losing the contrast. Well, yeah, you want somewhat low contrast uh, to still show like the weather happening, you know. But you want you want to feel the light, so you need that difference between the light and the shadow. Yeah. So I think I think that was probably the hardest part was just finding the balance. Some of the other files, like this one, I don't think was too bad, but other files I had, like the raw is just like gray. And then you might like play with the contrast or dehaze and then the colors get weird. And then you have to like fix those. And it's like hard. It's, it can be kind of hard to dial those in. Yeah, super nice. I wanted to show people that you don't just shoot like intimate tree scenes and stuff. <laughs> you, can, you can handle it when, when nature goes. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great nuts. scene. I don't seek them out, but you know, if they happen, I'm, I'm there for it. Good shit. Oh, yeah. Is that uh, it? That's it, yeah. yeah. It, dude. Brent, really appreciate you coming on and you really bringing some good images for us. I mean, you had some really great stuff and the stuff that we showcased, I mean, it's really hard to select from your portfolio because you really got some nice stuff. So I appreciate the opportunity to do that and I appreciate the opportunity for you, uh, uh, you know, kind of coming in on a little bit of a late notice and uh, hooking up the show. It's fucking dope, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, Paul's getting all sentimental right now. He's about to cry. Yeah. yeah hey, hang on a second. <laughs> hey, that's not me. I admittedly hadn't been on your website for a while and I was like, holy shit, he's got he's got a solid body of work now. Like uh I was really impressed. Just every single image was awesome. was awesome and definitely deserving of being featured. So it was difficult to pick. I just uh yeah, tried to pick stuff that felt a little different uh from your other stuff and have some nice variety so we could show like kind of what you're capable of the best we can mm -hmm. with just five images, but yeah, I really enjoyed all the stuff you shared as well, which I knew you would come through on. Um, yeah, I mean, thanks so much for having me on the show. It was super fun. I'm your number one fan, probably. I've seen every episode, and they're all, <laughs> they're all funny and, nice. uh, <laughs> and, and, real, and fun. And uh, so, yeah, total total honor to be here. And it's, I think it's a wonderful format. Just like um, it's entirely positive. It's all like what do you like and it's uh showcasing things people might not know and also just like it's fascinating how everyone everyone can look at the same image and interpret it like totally differently and right. like connect yeah. with different parts of it mm -hmm. so it's just really cool to have people like articulate that out loud um <laughs> the the best we can after four or five beers yes. <laughs> cool yeah. triples and then there's that X factor, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the wild card. Yeah, some of these wild episodes get pretty wild. Yeah, I'm loving how Polly's hat looks like he's got a rack on it right now. Hey, oh yeah, the horns. Hey, <laughs> right like matches perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hunting Brent. season. You might get you might Brent. get shot, Paul. Be careful. <laughs> Showcased uh, Brent slapping the bass because I'm I'm totally down with that and dude, I want to see that. That's cool. Let us let us know if uh, um, you know Jimmy and Mike if you hit the East Coast and uh, Eric and I yeah. if you Southwest yeah. or or Northwest because if it's Heck yeah I'll go for sure. I'm down. I'll come check it out. I fucking love like me. I love live music. It's it's my favorite. Sweet. I wasn't Damn, you're nicer than I am. I, I've been friends with Brent for years. I've never asked about when he's playing <laughs> near me. <laughs> and it, I, you and I'll be there. We'll just be like, yeah. oh, I got to grow my hair out again. Yeah. Dude, that's right. Leo, Leo would appreciate that. <laughs> Big sexy. <laughs> um, but yeah, Brent, you and I have both read lots of books about, you know, social media and uh, what it does to our attention span and everything. We share a lot of books like that with each other. But um, yeah, we just hope to give like great images a little bit more airtime than they get when people are scrolling through their feed as fast as they can while they're driving or something. So yeah, yeah. love that's it. the main hope of the show. I mean, I know it's not the the biggest show in the world, but for the people that watch it, I hope it provides some value by 
going in a bit deeper and maybe seeing some images that they missed because the algorithm threw in a bunch of chicks in yoga pants and uh, who knows what else that they <laughs> don't care about. So true. Or dudes in tiger shirts. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> Cheers to that. And fucking Mike is a savage. Dude, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to break the tiger out, I think, for our next episode. I thought you were gonna wear it for every episode after that. You kinda <laughs> You kinda put yourself in the corner. That? But you really that? can't I'd go totally up from there, so I've got other tombolo I can wear. I got oysters, mm. I got all sorts of shit. <laughs> you got like a bird one, you got like a bear one. Uh, I don't know if they have birds or bears, but they, yeah, they got they all animals. sorts of different shit. Spirit so, animals. Yeah. Not all animals, actually. Most tigers probably. I mean, yeah, yeah I guess oyster is an animal, but yeah, no, they're all, that's all, you got an oyster all weird one. shit. I'm, I'm stuck yeah, on the oyster, oyster one. one. I you mean, want me like, to go get it right now? Yeah. All right, <laughs> bust it out, man. Give me a second. Give He's me got it on deck in the wardrobe. Is yeah. it a clam or a other kind of bivalve or what the hell are we talking about? Here? Is there a bottle of Tabasco right. on that thing? Are oysters and clams in the same family? Yeah. Oh, really? Hey, wh- where'd he go? He's going to get his bivalve suit. Are we recording? <laughs> Are we in the green room? No, no, it's recording still. So we're definitely going to air this. Dude, I fucking love it. The audience <laughs> is gripping their seats right now. Brent, like the shit that the post game stuff is usually, you know the deal. <laughs> we let it go for a little bit. Yeah, we let this thing run, and people forget we're recording. And uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even envision what this thing's gonna look like. Here it comes. Coming in hot, boys. Don't zip that shit up. <laughs> oh my god, it is an oyster. <laughs> The noise. Yeah. Step closer to the camera. It's got shorts. It's got shorts too, but I don't feel like getting in the shorts, huh? Oh, it's a whole. It's a whole suit. It's a whole outfit. Yeah, they're all. They're all whole suits. Yeah, dude. I don't fuck around. But so yeah, still that thing though. But yeah, it's still terry cloth. So you know, nice and comfortable. Dude, I think that's the but, yeah. stuff that you're finding is really. Um, it just screams like I'm. I'm good to go and I'm comfortable. Yeah. Right. Is that a pearl that's like winking at us? <laughs> yeah, it's got like a little jewel in there. Or well, something. It's, it's kind of shiny. So, no, it's like a, it's like a little button. I guess that's where you, you can't fit a oh, whole little cigarette nipple, pack little in nipple there. Like, oh, yeah, a couple of probably get a couple of cigarettes in there. I think. That's where you put your joint. <laughs> that's where you put your nose clams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you could pop a couple of Magnum. There. I'll- God, I forgot how let it fall out, you know, bend that. over and let it fall yeah. out in front of him. Oh, yeah. See what you're doing. Sorry. Dad. Dad. <laughs> yeah, we'll have an episode where Michael shares, like, he features all of his favorite Tom Bolo yeah. get ups. Mike's a fucking yeah. perfect. <laughs> all right. We're gonna uh, we gotta uh, make sure to start tagging Tom Bolo in these uh, Instagram posts for these episodes. Yeah, possible Get sponsor. Twenty four bucks. Yep. For sure. Yeah, we should get a sponsor going on that shit. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, Brent, where are you? Uh, where are you headed next? What's next for you? Uh, I mean. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to the Devil's Lake State Park on hiking. And uh, really, I'm just, I mean, coming out to Utah to hang out with you. And uh, what? Yeah. You are? Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope so. Yeah, next week. Really? In November. Oh, there you go. Dope. That's, so I'm getting ready for that. I got to get my, uh, my hiking, hiking, back in hiking shape so I can keep up. See how that goes. You're going to have to prepare yourself mentally and spiritually as well. You're walking in some cold water, man. I got to figure out how to do that too. Shrinkage, you know? Yeah. It's a real thing. All right. What's next? Me? Cool. Yeah. Shoot and fall. 
Uh, I might head down. I mean, yeah, I've been shooting around my house, but uh, I might head down to Southern Utah soon once it starts popping off. I'm kind of waiting for my friends that are down there right now to give me the green light. Hmm. I can just shoot right down there, you know, so I can time it perfectly. You got scouts out there? Oh, yeah. I always got my people, my little birds. <laughs> yeah. I'm like <laughs> Lord good. Barris. <clears throat> Very good. <laughs> just throwing a pigeon out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. Yeah. Just uh, getting the getting everything prepared for you for your arrival, rolling out the red carpet. Got to line up all the compositions for you. You read my writer, right? What's that? You, know, you read my writer, right? What's that? A, a writer. It's like when a musician shows up to a music venue, they have like a list of demands, like no mm. green M and M's and like music slang. Yeah. I didn't know that term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I got all that. Right. I'll have the tripod holes all picked out. <laughs> you. Right, Bennett. You got to take care of this fucking guy. Shooting schedule. Yeah. He he wouldn't <laughs> shoot anything great without me. Uh-huh. Oh, well, I don't know. There's TJ. There's TJ. That's right. TJ yeah, is apparently like TJ by is far the, the best teacher. You you when he comes out, you better say what would TJ do? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just call TJ and just show him this scene. See what he would say. Yeah, yeah. Say, hey, Ben's saying this, but I think you would say that. So I just want to like, put it out there, see if it sticks. <laughs> TJ, can I get you on Facetime real quick? I just show you this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Ben's gone now. Nah, don't don't shoot like TJ, or else I'll have to wait for like seven hours while you're just like pointed straight down at the water. <laughs> <laughs> Never get off the trailhead. Yeah, I like to move a little quicker than that. <laughs> different strokes <laughs> alright boys well if anybody has some beer right. left cheers to another I'm, I'm fresh out. thanks Brett for coming on My sharing pleasure. some of that whiskey yeah thanks Brett magic awesome dude Brett yeah, thank you you know it was it was an absolute pleasure to uh to <clears throat> work and to dig through your through your portfolio and uh, yeah man for sure thank you. so I was stoked all right. Great Thanks. stuff. Keep sending yeah. us uh, just Mike, Paul, and I the photos that you have. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We it appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Uh, screen uh, shares. Until next time, everybody. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Later, Cheers. boys. Later, guys. <laughs>